And we're on. And hey. today's guest, we've got ex-bank robber, Mr. Ian Blink McDonald. First and foremost, Ian, I just want to say thanks for coming on the show, mate. Not a problem. Um, it's a pleasure, James. Thanks a lot. Uh, you know, well, uh, the public won't know, I actually know you. Mm -hmm. And I uh, actually knew your dad as well for Victoria, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And uh, your other, I know all your family, I know Billy and Jojo. Uh -huh. So Hi. it's good to see you Hello, again. It's good to see you, mate. You're looking well. Yeah, thank you. How's thank life been treating you? Oh, life's been treating me okay, mate. I've been out of serious crime for five or six years. Mm -hmm. But for if I can just start off with saying the last six months, mm -hmm. I feel as if, if I'm still getting hounded with Strathclyde Police. I. I've moved into Town Heads. Uh, I've been there 18 months. And uh, about seven months ago, I was going down to a certain sunbed shop in the town, which I wouldn't mention, and give them an advertisement. And uh, <laughs> I'd been chatting this girl up. And uh, we ended up becoming an item after 10 weeks. And the first date, the first date uh, I had with her, uh, I ended up meeting her in Merchant City, we went to Metropolitan, try to impress her with my gyro, know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we went to Metropolitan, we went to Browns, and we went to a place called Anchor Line, just at George Square. Fancy. And I was in there with a few friends, and uh, the night was going well, and uh, 10 past one, the, the, the pub had finished, and we'd come out looking into each other's eyes, know what I mean? Hadn't even kissed her yet. Mm. And... Uh, before you know it, my hand's up in the air, straight out the door. I'm police, I'm police. Have you got a gun on you? So all the cocktails to Metropolitan Bar and Browns and Anchor Line just zoomed right out me. I became sober. I went, what the fuck's going on here? And she shouted, Neen, don't shout. Shout? I was I was dumbstruck. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, say, I says, no. I says, do I think I've, I've got one of my... I says, I gunned down my trousers. I says, it'll be firing blanks <laughs> after, after this. <laughs> and, and so that, this, this wee copper walked her. Uh, was in plain clothes. And a, and a woman said 40, 50. And I, I thought they were a, a couple for London tourists or something. But it turns out they were for the anti-organised crime unit. And they says to me, they says, Ian, they says, uh, Listen, have you got a gun? I says, no, I've not got any gun. I says, what's this about? He says, it'll all be explained. And he uh, says, right, we're going to take you up to your house and search it up in town head, which I thought was highly unusual. I thought it just took to the police station, you know what I mean? Did they have a warrant? Well, when, when I got into the car, it became a bit of a joke, so it did. And uh, it was it was me weekend. It was a bank holiday. And we got into the car and the woman, the guy, the London tourist couple, I called them, she was in the front, and there was a driver, and the, the detective sergeant, I think his name was Gary, he's in the back, and I says, look, I've got cocaine on me, I says, are you going to keep me in for this? He went, not interested. He says, we've got good information, it's an intelligence-led operation, have you got a gun in the house? Even a plastic gun? I says, no. I says, where's this come from? He says, we'll explain. So the woman in the front, uh, and, I, and I says to them in the car, I went, I says, I thought you two were a, a, a couple on holiday. And she turned round for the front seat and she went, I'm going to put them out in them. <laughs> so this guy, Gary, was in charge of the operation, <laughs> went, no one of you have not got a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And the driver went, cool down, kids. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, this was the says, coppers that were Aye, in the car. And it, so it kind of a lightened up. Says, cool down, kids, this is serious. So we drove up to my, my, my house, from my flat. I've never heard of that. You get... And uh, so, because the sisters, they says, we have got a warrant in the car, and I went, I need bother. And uh, well, I says, well, I'm not letting them in the door anyway, sure. But we drove by my house, and I had to say to them, look, reverse back. It was a comedy of errors. So we got up to the house, and uh, we get in, and uh, so I'm cuffed, I'm cuffed at the back. One of the young coppers, there was about seven or eight of them, and there was armed police on that outside. And uh, he went like, do you mind again get this cocaine out of your pocket? I went, aye, and he put it on the table. And uh, he says, what's there? I says, a couple of gram. And he went, come on, no, there's about two or three gram there. Well, he would know. <laughs> he would know. <laughs> He's probably snorting it, know what I mean? Because <laughs> this, this young guy was only about 25. So 
But I'm still all worried and I'm going, what the fuck, where is this cane for, you know what I mean? So he says, okay, and he says, look, he says, uh, we're going to put a camera on, search your house. He says, so nothing here. And I piped up and I went, look, if we want to tell you, we've got a £10 bit of hash, you know what I mean? He went, not, not interested. So uh, then he says to me, right, he says, right, we're going to put the camera on, Use your name, so give my name and all of that, blah, 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 blah. Uh, then he says, look, he says, here's the warrant. He says, it's for a sheriff, Finlay, for Glasgow Sheriff Court. And it was issued in the 2nd of May, it's solely for firearms. And uh, this was the 4th of May. So I'm saying to myself, so they've had this for two days and they've no acted on it. So how, how they, they must have been falling into Browns and whatever. But to this day, I still don't know what it was. So anyway, they, they, they've done the search. They're doing the search, and uh, after a couple of minutes, the, the, the cameras on. He says, "Take Ian's cuffs off from the back, from the front. He's well behaved." Because I was shut myself. Mm -hmm. I thought they were going to plant me with a gun or something. Mm -hmm. But to, to to be to be fair and honest, uh, years ago I wouldn't say this, but now I'm mature and older. Uh, you've got good cops, bad cops. Good prison officers, bad prison officers. Mm -hmm. So these seemed quite, quite, quite good uh, police. No, I mean, because it says no, no. They says we, we're going to restrict. They says we're not even going to wreck your house. <laughs> but they done me a turn. <laughs> so they were in all the cupboards. I had about five bags of uh, stuff I had through it. Mm -hmm. So at the end, yeah, they says to me, "Do you want to come into the room and all that?" I says, "I'll just sit here." So that the rest of them are turning near the couch. She's around here, there. Then uh, the, the search went on for just over an hour, and they came in. And he says, Ian McDonald, he says, we're going to charge you with uh, what looks like cannabis and cocaine. I thought they weren't interested in that. That that that's that's what I thought. That that's what they say to you, is not what I mean. But uh, also when I mentioned doing it at George Square in front of the armed police, when I says, No, I've only got a gun doing my thing with and I says I've got a bit of Charlie. And the detective sergeant says this is in look, I did say that, but that these these armed police a fair juice in cocaine as well. And while we were in the flat, I made a blunder for the hash. They weren't bothering about that either. But what I say is about 10 minutes later when I'm sitting there, and I, I was, then I started getting drunk and going to shout, what about the hash at the bedside cabinet? And they all went, shh, mm -hmm. as if to say, look, so they come in, says you were reported to Procurator Fisco, turned it off and they went, bye. I went, bye, is this real? <laughs> so so they went away and they phoned up the first day. She went, are you in the police station with one of the phones uh, which she can smuggle on? I says, I'm in my kitchen. I says, they're away. So she got a taxi down. So it'll be a first day I'll never forget. Yeah, is, that, is she still stuck by you as well? <laughs> it, well, James, to tell you the truth, run, any, run. Any, any, other, any other scene last year, wouldn't they? But uh, I'm glad to say that she, she stuck by mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're still going together just now. Her name's Ashley. I'll not tell her her certain name. Shout she's Faber Mullock. And, uh, well, but Mullock says it all. <laughs> <laughs> it says it all. I think she was in the gringo. I think she was in the gringo when she was younger. <laughs> and uh, you know Bob Mullock as uh, well as me. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? It's just, it's not it's uh, yeah. but So she's that's a, what it's all started with. But that then I go But in. she's a lovely lassie. Uh -huh. And, uh, well, she told me to say that. But she is uh -huh. a lovely lassie mm -hmm. anyway. And we're still together and she stays with me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, She's a worker and all that, like me, I'm not a worker, I'm just a layabout. But uh, so so that was one instance, and about another six, seven months ago this year, I went to Tesco in Socky Hall Street, and uh, I'm a club card member, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Bogging up your points, uh, you? So this was the second incident this year, and I'm getting hassle. So I went to get the door, and I bought a foot shoe for precision. Provisions and uh, I'd bought this steak and they forgot to take the last year forgot to take the tag off it. So it went off and the security guard would you come in? I says, no bother and I went like that. I says, I says, that's my receipt there, mate. I says, you think I'm a shoplifter? I says, that steak's six pound odds. I try to steal six million pound. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to steal six a six pound steak. <laughs> so before you go to know it, the manager and that's come here and, and uh, she started shouting and I started shouting. I says, I can't be going to fuck yourselves, you know what I mean? I says, my club card member, I put this out. And uh, she says, uh, I'm getting the police for your cheek. I says, get the fuck who, who, who you want to get. So anyway, they got the, the police. Police came, as usual, handcuffed. And uh, it says, we're well, doing you a breach of the peace. 
Right, the snake wasn't even found because the receipt and that was there. So, got out the door, the woman shouted, uh, Mr. McDonald. I went, yes. She says, uh, you're now barred from Tesco. <laughs> and I shouted back to her, put that on the list of pubs, clubs, <laughs> casinos, <laughs> strip clubs. Everywhere in Glasgow. Uh, airports, <laughs> supermarkets. <laughs> and uh, I missed something out. Where's your there points going? That's what I want to know. So you're cared. I'm basically barred for everywhere. <laughs> and this is me trying to lead a quiet Change life. Your, but you think annoying that life of crime you're always going to get hassled to the day you die, do you and, think so? In Glasgow, I'm still well known, uh -huh. James. You're a high profile out, name. And, and people still say to me, we know you've got a few quid. And I'm mm -hmm. trying to say, I'm out of crime and mm -hmm. all of that. No, I mean, but... Because you're a high profile name. I've got that name. tag, You've yeah, been in, like I say, you've been in 18 prisons. You've you did your 16 year sentence for a bank robbery. Yeah. You've made documentaries. You've wrote your book as well, which is an yeah. absolute belt of a book. We can get that on Kindle. Is, where else can we get that? You can get it in Kindle and uh, the, the, the company that done it, James, was uh, Mainstream uh -huh. Productions Main uh -huh. and uh, they were based in Edinburgh and they they folded three years ago. So it kind of fucked me up for getting their thingies. But it's some book. But Random stories. House have got the thingy to it. They, they, they've still got the rights to it. Mm -hmm. But they've not published it again. But you can go on Amazon and buy it for 14 quid if there's any uh -huh. there. But it's on Kindle, so but it's still there. Book. The stories are unbelievable, and that's where we're going to go. We're going to go right back to the start where your life ah, started, that's fine, where aye. you get involved in all the crime and where you're now. So we'll go right back, mate, where you grew up. Well, thing, me, I was uh, originally... I, I, come from, I come from Black Kill, Proven Mill, right? But a lot of people don't know that I was born in Springburn. Uh, I stayed in... I stayed in Lindsay Street and there was a wheel was uh, behind it. And uh, it's just where the see where the, the Springburn Sports Centre is. Aye. It was it was a way back. I was born in 1961. So we were in a close, and but then you never even had a toilet in the in the in the flat. So it was a toilet in the close. And uh, I'm sure people as old as me will remember all this. <laughs> and uh, so I was I was born in a rotten row. Then my young brother Gary came along. He's a, a year younger than me, and uh, so my memory, my memory, my earliest memory re re recollections is uh, we had to share this tin bath. It's not like your jacuzzis and your baths and all that now. And uh, the time, time I came six, I went to Albert Primary School, but my man I used to take us into Woolworths. And I, I, I must have I must have been thinking me destined to be to lead a life of crime. You know the pick mix. Mm -hmm. I was always putting my hands in and stealing them. <laughs> so I think that's where <laughs> so it started. I got a wee start. Know <laughs> what I mean? But uh, all kidding aside, we moved up to Alan. I think Alan was born. I've got another. I've got three brothers and a sister. We well, had another brother, but he died, John, tragically. He didn't been older than me. So I don't know if he'd have been wild or whatever as well, but hopefully he wouldn't have been. So we moved up to Proven Mill. We had to move for a bigger house and all that. And uh, we moved to this house in Drumpelia Street in Black Hill. I thought I was in heaven, whatever heaven was. We'd, it was a block house, you know, the block house with two bedrooms, mm -hmm. with a bathroom, with a big back garden. We, we were on more glory. We fucking, fucking hell, this is, this is brilliant. But you've got to remember, James, it was brilliant. But Black Hill is not just a deprived area. It's one of the most deprived areas of Europe. But we still thought it was great. And uh, then my sister Tracy, she came along in 1970. She she was born there. And uh, had a lot of good times there. There was a, it's the M8 motorway now. And it was a canal. And it was... It finished, I went to Ridgery Primary School and the canal ended at Ridgery Primary School and it finished up at Bayliston. So this canal, we used to get in a, a lot of good times. We'd get in with bows and arrows as young boys and we'd be, there was water rats and all that, so we'd be trying to find we'd bird nesting and no, it was it was great times and we'd play two-man hunt with the boys that met up there. I don't know if you know about two man. Two man hunt. We used to play in Stone House Street. Ah, uh, so. and at, at the time, well, we get thing. Well, you probably get a bar of chocolate after it because mm. you're a lot younger than me. <laughs> we, we would get a piece of uh, lemon curd, <laughs> but that was a big treat for us. Then, you know what I mean? 
And uh, so we, we had a lot of good times. At that time, James, you could leave your door open. No, these days, at uh, at that time, in the seventies, you could leave your, your your front door open, back door. The, the drugs weren't in the scene then. No, I mean, in uh, I, I I could honestly say, even though we came from a poor family, you know what I mean. We weren't mm. the middle class or nothing. But I never came from a crime family. I'd like to state that as well. My mother was always a hard-working woman mm-hmm. and my dad was a, a, a hard-working guy as well. But what what happened, where it all went wrong, was uh, my mum and dad they ended up falling out. And uh, my dad was a disciplinarian, by the way. And but before I forget this as well, because it's way back, when I was five years, six years of age, he took me Ibrox. He was a sort of a ranger supporter. Mm-hmm. If if he get cut, he wouldn't bleed uh, red. He would bleed blue. And we moved to, as I say, Black Hill when I was six from Pelia Street. And Black Hill and Royston is known as, well, yeah. Celtic, Republican area. So we've got a lot of recollections. Eh? My dad he didn't give a fuck, even, even though he wasn't a crook. But he loved rangers. And so did I. When I went at five. All my pals up in Black Hill used to try and change me. It was ingrained in me, but then I was the changing. Mm-hmm. So uh, my dad used to come along the street on a Saturday night. He'd go to other games. I'd go a few of them. And the ones I didn't, he'd come along steaming. My mum would go like that. I was about 10 then. Gary's nine, Alan was at four or something. Get him, fucking get him in here. People get murdered for less. You know what I mean? Singing his ash. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd fucking drag him in and uh, there was two bedrooms in the house and uh, me Gary shared a bunk bed and Alan was a single bed and uh, Tracy when she was born 70 I think she stayed my man dad's but it was it was still good but talk about the football again us three were in the room we were young boys and uh, we heard my dad greeting what the fuck's up, my granddad? What the fuck? So I went to investigate. And I've sneaked out the room. And I've says to my mum, I says, What's my dad greeting for? She went, Oh, son, his team Rangers get beat today again. I went, What? So I went back into the room to Gary and Alan. I was in the top bunk. And uh, I went, Oh, Granny McDonald's no deeds. I says, uh, Rangers get beat. And I was in the top bunk going, Fuck that for a game of soldiers. <laughs> Your team gets beat. I says, and uh, you're, you're upset like that. I says, there must be more to life than that. So uh, that that's that 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 was that was kind of in Rumpelia Street, and I uh, made a lot of good friends there. And I told you we were the canal and all that and two man hunt. So at twelve years of age, we moved again to get. We needed another room because of my sister. So we moved to Proven Mill and Black Kill. It's like a border. Mm-hmm. Everybody at Disney know Proven Mill and Black Kill. They, they seem to think it's, they say it's the same area, but it's not. It's split by Proven Mill Roads. We are for Thompson. He stayed Proven Mill Roads. And uh, so we moved to Green Rig Street, which was just around the corner for Arthur Thompson. And uh, another pal, three years ago, Paul Ferris stayed. He was just a couple of streets away as well. So we were down in Green Rig Street. I was 12. Then my secondary school came up and I went to secondary school. And uh, it was a big run school. And guess what it was about next day? Berlini. <laughs> Which is hell and earth. I can say this to now. Mm-hmm. If any of the young ones want to disregard what I'm saying. I've been getting, I've been in there for I was 16 when I got Boston. I know people might say, how are you in there at 16? But at that time, I'll be back in 1977. I get Boston training and uh, he stayed, he went to Berlin and stayed there a couple of nights. And uh, at 16, James, I, I'm not afraid to admit this. This was what, 40 odd years ago. I was terrified. Mm-hmm. Terrified in Berlin. You know what I mean? You'd always see these stories for a young boy at 16. I know people who know it's 30, 40 they can for driving a fence or whatever. And so I was absolutely terrified. And uh, I'm in this reception area and all these other hardened crooks and all that. We're in the waiting room it's before you get to see the doctor. They check you for nits and all yeah. that and the seaside nippers down there. And 
It's a good and if you're cheeky, <laughs> aye, aye, if you're cheeky, <laughs> aye, but it's a dope, it's a guy. He's, aye, he's, he's, he's got a big lampshade and all that. And see if you're cheeky. I know it happened loads of times. It'd go, aye, you've got seaside nippers and you'd shave there. Where's and, seaside nippers? Like uh, crabs? The seaside nippers is the crabs. Crabs. Aye. Yeah, if you think me. Where is it? Shell coats. That's uh -huh. <laughs> so, so, that's, uh, so you were in Boston. What is, what, what I, 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 I just turned 16, but before that, James, uh, we, we'd moved up to, as I say, we were, we were in Green Rig Street for 12. My dad left at 14, right? He got kicked out at 14. My mad had enough of him. But when he got kicked out, we used to have come to my granny, so she stayed in my Broyston Avenue up in Proven Mill, and my granddad. Uh, jokey and they were two fabulous people know what I mean that was my mad sister and I used to sit with my grander and uh, we'd watch the wrestling that was a big thing then Mick McManus uh, Giant Stay Giant uh, Haystacks uh, Big Daddy and all that mm. so and Uncle Charlie my mad's brother he was in the Royal Marines and uh, he was always coming back for places Singapore Hong Kong and bring his wee presents we were, we were proud of him he's been in the army and I uh, would stay stay up my granny's for a couple of weeks my mother getting back with my dad it was a cycle back and down forward but I used to love getting up to my granny and granders and, uh, and then tragedy struck when I was 14 my uncle Charles he was 25 and uh, he was based in Plymouth with the Marines and uh, I think he was in Malta or something and they say in the army a lot of people die Known conflict accidents. I think they were changing a tyre and he got crushed, got died. So I was only 14. And uh, by this time, my granny and grand had moved into the Cole Street flats in Germiston. And uh, we've, got, we've got my uncle Charlie up. He was six feet four or something. And he was going to get married to this lassie as well. He'd been in for he was 16. I think he'd been in nine year, nearly nine year. I think he was served up for nine year and he uh, had about a year to go. And he died. I always remember that funeral. It was at Ridgely Cemetery. And all his, uh, thing me, all his comrades for the Marines, they were, you know, the uniforms on. And we were at Ridgely Cemetery. And it was very, I can still remember it. It was what, I was 40, it was 40 odd years ago. And I still remember it was a sad occasion. They, they played the last, the last salute. And uh, it was, it was sad, you know what I mean? And uh, I put him in the book I wrote. I, 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 I says to myself, if I'm ever going to write a book, or whatever, I put his photo in. So there's a book in. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was one incident a few years ago. The book's been out six years. About talking with my Uncle Charlie again. And uh, I was stoned at Ridgeway Library. I was waiting on somebody for something. And this guy came jogging by. And he uh, was at 40 or something. I, I thought he was a prison officer or... I says, is he a serious crime squad or something? And he went, are you Ian McDonald? And I went, aye. And he went, shook my horn. And he went, glad on you. He says, eh, I've read your book. He says, your, your uncle's a fine soldier. I'm in the Marines. So that gave me a boost. Aye. That made me feel happy. His memory's I mean? still kicking on. Aye, his memory's still trying to kick on and just the, the, the way he says that. But uh, still, still at 14 after the funeral. So my dad's definitely away for the the house at the time and uh, me and my two brothers we were always like hanging about the corner at Greenside Street or the boys but my dad was he was he was strict you know what I mean which was a good thing you know what especially I mean? getting brought up in a scheme because you can you can slip down the you can slip ah, the spiral, especially can Black Hill Proven Mill you know what I mean mm -hmm. which they, they were bad areas I know in this day and age Black Hill in Proven Mill you could say the they were bad but see, see everywhere now James in Glasgow anywhere Everywhere's bad now, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? There's no, there's no area, it's it's thing, it's it's hard or soft or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then Black Hill problem all was. So my dad eventually left and we, we, we were we were a bit scared of him, you know what I mean? And uh, we took the country out of my ma basically. Mm -hmm. We hung about with the boys at the corner and we started car thieving. That's how I got into crime, you know what I mean? And uh, car thieving and before you know it was fun a period about three or four months, I'd get to jail about three times, car thieving and police assault. And uh, I ended up in a place in Larch Grove in Edinburgh Roads. It was a place, 
St aye. John's. I think Johnny Steele. I watched. Aye, Johnny boys. I Johnny. Spoke I, watched Johnny. About I know last Johnny well. I know Johnny. Johnny boys German a good Joe. Guy. Give Johnny a shout. Uh, he's they, a good they, guy. The pals, I mean, so I, I watched Johnny's show. And I remember he was saying about Larch Grove and that. He speaks a lot about the jails and the places he was in and all that. And he's quite right about the physical abuse that took place. I was never sexually assaulted, but I was took out a door him a few times and took up the stair and barred fuck out of you. Is this the guy called the monk? No, that this this I think Johnny was talking Spoke about, about another in, guy in St. Joseph got, or something. Just got to jail last year. Ah, he got to jail. Was electrocuting but him and all, all the memories came back after watching your interview mm -hmm. with him, uh, with Johnny and uh, he'd been dorms and that and uh, I, I hated that. I was in there for an assessment. I was at a children's panel, I was at an assessment. Was was it a go to your approved school or, or whatever? So while I was in there, uh, I, I was a frightened boy as well in there, not no fear to admit it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, I got took out a couple of nights to up the stair, battered with these people, they were the prison officer now taking a liberty. Fourteen year old boy, you know what I mean? They'd make you stand in the corner all night. And uh so there was people for Black Kill that and as well, a boy dainty for Black Kill. And I remember I, I wish I was in his dorm. Guys came up during the night <laughs> with a, a diamond jack and the thing with the bars and they got them out, they escaped. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I wish I was fucking in that so dorm this to escape as well. Wayne's getting kicked fuck out of here, were they getting sexually abused as well? They were they were and uh thing I I've just been reading about it the last few years and uh I've I don't know if I should make a complaint. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't sexually, so but I was kicked fuck out of you. Mm -hmm. I'm only about 14. Mm -hmm. It was a fuck all. That's they physical would, abuse. Aye, that's I mean. physical. And they would take you up and they would put you, they put you in a dark room on it. Was this priest or anything? Or was it screws? They, they weren't the priests. They were kind of, because this was a, an assessment centre, Larch mm -hmm. Grove. And, uh, but, but they, that was they, a kind they, of way I think, was it knowing to try and Bat the boys to try and discipline them. That was our old way, I think. When even at schools used to get fucking but, 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 but I know, and seeing that belt to get outlawed, that uh -huh. belt was sore. You know uh -huh. what I mean? That, that 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 belt used to. I remember in school. I know I'm going to have track. That's all right. I was in school and I'd get the belt, and the teacher would do it in front of the lasses, and you didn't want to show any fear. But that uh -huh. belt, six of the belt. It was fucking sore, <laughs> but you're trying to your you're in. trying to keep your face in so the lassies will no go. He's well, tough. Look at him. He's fucking a wee fucking wanker. He's soft. Can't you know what I mean? But uh, that should have all been outlawed as well, and because uh, it would never it would never happen this day and age. Was that, was that what you get to jail for car theft in the first one? Aye, the car theft uh, first time. My mum was coming to the police stations. I got done a few times. Then then they kept me in this time for the car theft and the. Police assault, and I get three weeks in the that's the Slatch Grove. Then I went back up in front of this thing with panel, and uh, I got a year's residential training, and they sent me to a place uh, in Paisley, a, pa a place called the Kibble Approved School, and uh, I didn't like it in there either. And I think I was only in there about three months, and uh, there was there was boys. During the night, you would see boys greeting for their man and all that, know what I mean? It was, it was, it was there weren't the nice places then. Mm -hmm. And uh, the governor then was, his name was Gardner, we called him Plastic Arse Gardener. <laughs> he used to come out with this pipe and fucking, he's supposed to get shot in the arse and all that. So they take you working and they take you in these fields picking turnips. So I, 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 I says in the book, I says, while we're fucking picking turnips up, but Ron's fucking freezing. Oh, plastic arse, he's getting the fucking benefits of the money, smoking his fucking pipes, his heart's content. But we we're doing that. And uh, so I, I got out in a home leave. They let me out in a home leave for, for this approved school. And I remember all my pals saying to me, Oh, what likes it in there? They, they thought it was great. Mm -hmm. And I says to them, bring me, I says, look. I says, it's no all birds and sunshine. I says, try picking fucking uh, frozen turnips in a cold field and fucking, uh, as a governor, the, the money's gone towards him for his fucking, he always had this pipe and all that. And uh, then I went back 
then I ended up escaping. I escaped, so, <laughs> and I escaped with fucking the, the kibble. I, I just I just hated it, you know what I mean? Then I went back to thing. I, I was only in there in a couple of weeks, and at the time, stealing cars again. But I used to steal uh, cars, James. Uh, at, at the beginning, it was just joyriding. That then I would get the wheel. People would order a thing with Mark, Mark One Cortina, which was flashy cars. Then mm-hmm. they'd steal the wheels and cassettes. So I was making money like that, like that. And uh, I was up in Green Side Street at a party. And uh, when I was on the run, I've come out. And I was chatting this lassie up. So I was, I was 14 and a half, I mean, 14 and a half. The record came on, Rod Stewart, tonight's the night. And I went, tonight's the night for me with this wee blonde bird. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing happened. And uh, I went out with my pals after the party. I get a, uh, we got a chase, Royston Road, crashed. Police ran after me. This is, I try to assault them. I try to get a fence. Bang, but at the end of the day, they didn't give a fuck. I get smashed fuck out of with truncheons and all that. So that 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 was me thing with uh, or a small time crime, wasn't it? Really up aye, to Aye, this was a small crime. So I graduated to Long Regent Schoolboys. And as soon as I turned sixteen, uh, I was in with the big boys, but on this my sixteenth birthday, the way it worked out. I get three weeks uh, detention in Boston reports. Detention consisted of eight weeks. Boston could be nine months, 12 months, whatever. So the day I went to Glasgow Sheriff Court for the police assault in this this car, uh, a couple of representatives that worked in the cable, they came to me and they says, look, we can get you a two-year residential order in the Rossi Farm. And I says, fuck off. I says, two years? I says, I can go and plead guilty of this, which I'm doing anyway with these reports. I says, the sheriff could give me detention eight weeks. Bosto. I says, uh, nine months, ten months, whatever. I says, but if I take two years residential training in Rossi Farm, I says, I'm in the opinion now, I'm going to be a crook. They went, what? They says, so do you know what I to go and talk up for you? I says, no. I says, because what's the use of doing the two years Rossi Farm, I came back out, then I'm going to get Bosto. I'll get it early the new. Oh, do you know what that boss was like? No, I says, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but I did give a fuck. <laughs> but I wish I could back to this approved school. <laughs> so uh, so that's what happened, James. Uh, when this was this is me talking about going into Berlin. This was my first time. I got sentenced that day to Boston training. I was hoping for detention, but I got Boston training and they took me up to Berlin. And uh, I told you about it, no, and I could see it for school and all that. And, I must have been looking at it saying, I'm destined for this fucking place, you know what I mean? And I got in there, and uh, it was it was frightening. And uh, I was sitting, I think the door already says, I was sitting in this waiting room, and uh, we threw, these, threw the older guys, guys with scars and all that, one, not myself, you know what I mean? Did anyone try and intimidate you then? Oh, they, no, they were kind of going, wee man, you look awful white, and all that. <laughs> and I says, fuck. <laughs> I says, white? I says, fuck, Sam. Fucking shit myself, you <laughs> And uh, they says to his, uh, th- then I heard the one one of the, the screws coming out of the white coat. You were again to see the doctor and that. And uh, I heard them worry him saying, right, name and number for the thing with uh, this officer. So I turned round to this guy and I says, name and number. I says, do I still use the same name and number for long again? He went, we man, you're not in the children's playground anywhere. You're in Berlin. I says, I don't know the name and number. And another guy piped up and went, Listen, son, he says, My man's mere chance to get the fucking of numbers up in the bingo there. <laughs> Are you remembering your number for longer again? Mm. So then they shouted me and I just ran in and I just fucking blubbered, gave the number and they never thing with. They gave me the thing with. There was no seaside nippers, never got my hair cut. Stayed in Berlin for two days, absolutely hated it. And, uh, I could see out the window, uh, James, to, to Maltus and Drumpelia Street, and I could see the, the this time the motorway, the canal would thing me, the motorway was there, and I was looking at it, it was going like that. <sighs> I wish I was back with my man. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Aye, as soon as I wish I was back with my man. That, and I, I'm not ashamed to say that any sixteen year olds, 
But anyway, at that time, Berlin and a wee back, this was mm -hmm. a wee back in 19, this was March 1997. I just turned 16 then. So I went to a place, in Berlin two days, I was like, thank fuck out of here. So I went to a place, uh, what's the name of the bus? <laughs> Pullman. Went to Pullman and I go there and I was in the, the, the reception and I saw these guys with suits. I went, what the fuck's the CID doing here? The CID turned out that was the prison officers. They didn't wear uniforms. And uh, so they, they've thing made, they've said to us, right, you'll be going to a place called Ali Cali. A lot of the boys that will be listening to the show, uh, they, they'll know what I'm talking about. Know what I mean? There was a there was a centre called the Allocation Unit, and you went there for a period of about six weeks. Then they assessed you. Were you staying in Pullman? Or they had two open uh, two two open bostels. One was in Castle Huntley, which is now used for a an open prison. Mm -hmm. But th that time it was a Boston, another one was no inside. So you go to six weeks assessment. But wait, wait, and I'll tell you what happens. <laughs> I've no got a fucking clue. So the, the, the prison officer would get back, get put into this alley Cali, and uh, a couple of hundred prisoners there. So I get put into my cell, and the prison officer says, You'd be woke up, I think it was six o'clock, half six in the morning. No, I mean, because it was to give you a shot. It was to give you a shock, mm -hmm. this Boston and detention centre. And it fucking was a shock. He says to me, have that, see your bed sheets in your covers. He says, have that uh, in a bed block. I says, what the fuck's a bed block? Mm -hmm. He says, I want, it's like the army. He says, I want you to have it all square and fold your sheets mm -hmm. and tuck it in. The cases. Went, and so he says, I'll get a boy to show you what to do. And I went, well, I mean, I don't want to be able to fucking do that. Mm -hmm. So the next morning, uh, this boy says, this is be prepared. This is everybody goes to the gym first thing in the morning. This is your door open half six. He says, You'll be took to gym. I says, Half six? The fucking gym. So I'm still fucking trying to make this fucking bed block. I think I made it a circle shape instead of that thing there. Mm -hmm. And I've got these shorts and that on. And uh, I had to be out my cell by this time with one of the prison officers. He went, Get your fucking cell. You're still not ready. I got out the cell and I started walking along and he scalped me right in the ear. He went, no, bunny hops. I went, bunny, what the fuck's a bunny hop? But the people in front of me, I was I was just, I was just still shocked with this fucking bed block shite. I didn't even realise that instead of the people walking along the corridor, they had their, they had their horns, James. I don't know if you know what a bunny hop is. Uh, you have your, your horns behind your neck and your fucking bunny no, hop. No. Along the fucking, it's hard as fuck. I know and what a was, but I didn't even think you would do that. Oh, you did that in Boston. Th this was 1977, March. So you bunny hopped all the way along to the fucking gym. I kept fucking falling. It was, <laughs> I was, Why that's did they make you do that? I wasn't exactly fat, know what I mean? Why did they make you do that? It was it was to give you a shock, and mm. it was to... It, it was to embarrass you a bit of noise. Oh, it was embarrassing, and it was, it was like ex-army uh, prison officers, and uh, they were trying to get you in there and I think, well, the goodness here for, for them was they were trying to get you a better person and you don't go back to prison. Mm -hmm. So, done all that, then during the day, they had you cleaning. But they had you cleaning with a fucking toothbrush. They in corridors and all that. Oh, it was a heavy, heavy regime. Mm -hmm. I met a lot of good people in there, so I did as well for, for years ago. And uh, boy Sugar Donald, I met him. He was four years younger than me, and uh, he was for Berlarnock. I still know Shug for this day. And uh, I played Tommy Kilmartin for the Carlton, uh, big boy Frank Ward. There, there was loads of people, Eli Black, there was loads of people I got to know. Got to know. And uh, my first book, I'd never read any books in my life, James. And I says, fuck it, I'm bored in the cell. She's going to read a book. And I remember the book was Papillon. <laughs> with all books, the guy you know what I mean? Like Escaped for a jail. Ah, yeah, in France. So that, ah, that, yeah. that was the first book. I always remember. I, I'm an avid reader, just mm. now, still to this day. And this book was loads, and I read that. And uh, my man, my sister Tracy, was coming up to see me. And uh, Gary, by this time, 
he was in approved school. Uh, Alan, he ended up, Gary ended up in a place called Jailsland in Beef. And uh, Alan ended up in St. John's. So my man said, must have been fucking nothing. I mean, is, many, many jails were you in then before you were 18? Before I was 18, I'd been in Larch Grove, I'd been in the... Uh, I'd been in the Kibble. I'd been in uh, Berlin for the couple of nights at 16. I'd been in a... Uh, Pullman in Alicali, and that's what I forgot to tell you, James. Mm. After the six weeks the assessment, uh, you go to see the governor and and see before you get, see the governor, they grab you by the neck, and the boys will tell you this, and they run you right in the fucking door and throw you right in. You've got your name and number to the governor, your name. So they decided they were sending me to Castle Huntley. You know I mean, you the know old there. aye. So they sent me up there. And uh, I was only up there a couple of weeks. And this boy got wide with me. Boy for Dundee. He was about 19. I was still 16. And uh, it was dormitories at the time, you know what I mean? And uh, I, I, I don't know where he strength I ended up. He's been wide with me. And I just kicked his face right. He was lying in his bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and fucking... So I settled into Boston. And... Uh, after six months, you get a blue shirt or a red shirt, then you move you down to another bit of it. And uh, they had a sports day and all that as well. And uh, once you're near the end, I, I remember August, I'd been in my Boston, I'd been in, what was that, Boston, for August, eh, uh, for March 77. I remember around about August 77, I think, I think Elvis Presley died, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh it was the same, I think it was the same same year, Kenny Douglas. I'm into my football and all that, mm -hmm. even though I, I'm no I'm no biased. Mm -hmm. Most of my family are all Celtic. You know what I mean? My boy, my boy in my last year, Celtic, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I'm Rangers, I, I wouldn't mm -hmm. change for the world, you know yeah, what I mean? Change now, yeah, no, I'm not changing now, you know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe you should. <laughs> we've, got, we've, got, we've got Stevie Gerrard. I'd like, to, I'd, like to welcome, I'd like to welcome Stevie and Alex to the city. <laughs> And uh, say, don't go to Princess Square, go to Princess Pub <laughs> up Smithy Cross Road. It's for the Ranger supporters. Blue Nose Pub, in it? <laughs> Heavy Blue Nose uh -huh. Pub. So don't go there, you know what I mean? That's a wee tip for you, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, I carried Douglas, I always remember uh, being in Boston. He was a record transfer fee, £440,000. To, where was it? Was it Liverpool he went to? Liverpool, aye. And that, that, that was that same year. Elvis Presley died that year as well, and all that. But I ended up being in six or seven months and they, they let me out for a day release. My man that came up, took me into Dundee, and you were one don't drink and all that, so he could set you back. Then uh, I was working in the cuckoo's in there, James. That, that was my job. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to be in the gardens and it wasn't the, there wasn't any forthcoming. I was saying, I'll get a job in the gardens for the summer. But the time it came up to the summer, they says, says, look, we've got a job, but I like to the cooks that much. And uh, there was boys for Paisley and all that in as well. And they they were like, Ian, get extra, get extra food and all that, you know what I mean? And we'll square you up. Boy Basil Burns mm -hmm. and he, he the brother, you know what I mean? The two of them were in. A big boy, Hendy, Mally. And uh, I'd give them extra chips and they'd give me bars of soap. No, we hangs, we commodities like that go a long way in prison. Aye. So I enjoyed the cook I stayed in it. And uh, the event, I got, I got out before 17th birthday because I got the boss through when I was 16 and three weeks old and I'd done 11 months. So eventually they released me a week before I was 17. So there's a twist to this. A lot of people don't know this. They think that that was me just... I've actually had a job, James. Mm -hmm. My ma worked in Forest Hall Hospital. Years ago, it was called the Poor House. Research that on the book, you know what I mean? And uh, my ma worked in the canteen. My two aunties, they worked in the cookhouse. Uh, Forest Hall, you know, it's, it's all boat houses now. Do you know what I'm talking about? Aye, aye, aye. That used to be, did you know that mm -hmm. used to be a hospital? No. Aye, uh, so, so they it's worked there. It's always semi detached and that. Aye, uh, uh, so, so, so they used to work there. Yeah. And uh, my ma, she's in the canteen, she could talk to, there was, she could talk to these guys. 
a guy, Duncan, uh, Duncan Lightbody, and there was a guy, McKerricker, they were heating engineers. You remember the street, Hotspur Street, right, uh, aye, aye. Mary Hill. Aye. So my man gets talking and all that, saying, my boy's just out of Boston and all that, blah, 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 blah. He says, I'll take him on. My man says, I've got a natural, what a fucking job. She says, what is it, heating engineer? I says, the fuck? I go, idiot. But James, I took it on. They get the guy, the guy Duncan Lightbody, he took a big chance. My man explained, look, he's just out and he says, well, he's a bit, he's a year later to go to college and what, but I'll give him a chance, put him through it. So, so I done it. I done it for about five months and I was enjoying the job, you know what I mean? But then again, I went to the problem of Lynn, a couple suck, of the troops, suck back had in. a stolen car, jumped into it, got a chase, fucking crashed, <laughs> police again, <laughs> bought us early fucking that. <laughs> and that was me back, I went to a place called uh, Long Regend. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> a fucking joke. So, so this was the, the heat, no, but to, to be fair, my mum was coming saying, you fucking stupid bastard. Mm -hmm. Got your asses, I know, I'm fucking drunk, jumped into this motor, blah, 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 blah. She says, look, Duncan's still willing to take you back. But I, I was so embarrassed now, I went, how can I get back? He said he was like a right good guy, him. No, he was a, he was a cracking guy, and his, his partner was uh, George McCarricker. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. that, this, this is what, this is the year 1978 we're at now, James. 40 years ago. And, uh, and I, 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 I actually enjoyed the job. Imagine me, a, a heating engine and stereo and mm -hmm. stuff. But it's again, in my life. can you imagine if you'd stuck to it as well? How I'd things a good job. A heating engineer is uh -huh. a good job. See, you already, see you, know, you were going through all that, Ian, right up to your 18. Was there ever a time you'd done, fuck this? Because the amount of times you were in for 15, 16, <laughs> 17, 18, was there ever a time? I ran a mock, uh, see my dad leave, uh -huh. and I just went, fuck it. And I joined that's, that's, the where, that's where everything started spiralling out for you because you had a free for all to do what you wanted. So then, then I made a decision, James, when I was in for the. The other car theft and the police assault. I never bat they bat me, you know what I mean? So I uh, ended up getting, I think I got three months. And after the three months, my man says, look, Duncan, and that says, what? I says, man, I says, I'm too embarrassed to get back to that job. I says, fuck it. I says, I'm just, I'm a life of crime, fuck it. And you just that's accepted me. it then? I just I said, that accepted it then. Then I started uh, going out with a couple of people. And I was travelling over England, and I was I was still still low 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 time. Uh, I was shoplifting, you know what I mean? And I did get a jail in Blackpool. <laughs> <laughs> you're not very, you're not a very good girl. No, no, I know it's a jail in Blackpool, and I, get, uh, sick, <laughs> I went to a place called Risley. It's in Cheshire, Risley, Grizzly. One of the boys for Liverpool, Manchester, and that go here. So I'm in there at eighteen, and uh, we've got remanded. Three week remand or something. Stole a video recorder at the show, and all that. They were all beta max and all these were all these, these thing we hangs. And uh, so so we got to come back to this bed and breakfast we were staying in get to jail. So we went to Blackpool Magistrates Court and uh, I got six months. Well j j just before that in Risley Grizzly, they were shouting that the shouting calling his jocks and all that, and I was saying to the boys for Liverpool and that. Who the fuck are you calling jocks? My name's fucking it. No, mate, jock. And I says, fuck off. So that, that this guy for Liverpool. <laughs> uh, this guy. Like Elliot, it's like, I'm fuck, fuck up myself, <laughs> ain't No, so this Shout guy. Shout out to my man, Elliot Reeves, so, 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 letting us use his stuff, man. So, so I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember everything, James. It's quite hard. <laughs> I know what I mean. I mean there's, 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 that there's loads. There's loads. We're not even at the fucking, <laughs> the good bit shit. We've not even shit. begun. No, I mean, this so. This is breakfast uh, time, Elliot. You sit back so, and relax, big man. So there was, the, the boy for Liverpool, he kept annoying me, and I'm in this Risley Grizzly, right? And uh, I don't know if it's a woman's prison now and all that at the time, or if it's a guy's. So this is 1978, and uh, this guy was annoying me. I says, I'm going to batter his cunt, you know what I mean? Because I was a bit wild and all then. Mm -hmm. So you were allowed radios in, and you get a PP9 battery. And in the book, there's a chapter called Sweaty Sock, mm -hmm. where this guy called me Sweaty Sock. So I says, fuck him. He says, says that to me once, Mayor. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a win. Is that Jock? Jock, aye. Mm -hmm. So what i done is I took my PP9 battery out my radio and he was lying in his bed and I went, how you doing, big man? Still want to call me a sweaty sock? He went, aye, yeah. And I just went like, fuck you. Smashed him right over the head with the soap with the PP9 battery. <laughs> so I bolted 
But they found out it was me and they put me down in the, the blo- they call it the block, the segregation mm-hmm. unit. So I was thinking, oh, fuck, I'd smash the scene with this fucking thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but they couldn't really prove it was me. The guy was mm-hmm. sticking them in, you know what I mean? And that, saying that, the guy for Liverpool, in the coming years, I've made, met loads of Liverpool guys, so a lot of good guys, but this was just this instance, mm-hmm. at 18, and uh, they were all singing out their windies because the block was not going... The jocks in the block. Mm-hmm. The jocks in the block. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the jocks in the block. And I was all like, ah, fuck you, and all that. But do you think that was just an awe when people were trying to maybe pick on you, bully you, kind of? Ah, a it. lot of bullying with on then, James. That's to show a bit of authority and make a name for yourself and make a stand. Anybody says that and nobody's stopping in my way. Nah, and I wasn't taking any shit then, because uh-huh. I'd made my mind and tricking. To go 100%. Aye, so we, we went to court after the the thing with the sweaty sock incidents, you know what I mean? They took mm-hmm. me to court to Blackpool, gave us six months. Guess where they've took me? They've took me to HMP Wall, Liverpool. <laughs> and I went, for fuck's sake. I said, is a cunt for the sweaty sock? I said, mm-hmm. he's going to have all his fucking pals. Yeah, his yeah. family there. But uh, it turned out, no, I was there and uh, I had a couple other recharges to get up for in uh, Scotland. So I was only in HMP Walton at the time. And uh, when I was in it, there was an actual escape. You know what I mean? I think there, there was a radio station called, it was called the Metro or something, and two guys actually escaped from Liverpool. And uh, so I was there about six weeks. And I got a letter on that through. You have to get up to Scotland, a couple of charges. I was like, thank fuck you here. So they transferred me up to a place called Low Lo Newton. Mm-hmm. I think it's a woman's jail now. It's near Durham. It was in there a week or something. Then they took me to Glen Oco, Young Offenders. First time I'd been in there. And they took me up with this other boy, Donnie McDonald, for uh, Canvas Langney relation. And uh, Donnie was, expe- I was only expecting a couple of months. Donnie was expecting 18 months. But it turns out he gets three years. So we're in the same section in, in Glen, Glen Oco, y- YOY. And uh, Donnie refused to work and all that. And he's next door to me. And uh, he says to me this Saturday, we're only there two or three weeks. He says, I'm smashing my cell up, right? And we'd managed, boys were making a switch. So we'd get steaming, me and Donnie and, that and a few other people. And uh, the doors, it wasn't the keys, it was all these central lock, and you press it and the, the doors are open. And uh, you, pre- you press your buzzing to go, buzzer to go to the toilet and you were allowed it three or four minutes so the reason I'm telling you this story is to get my gun barred in <laughs> the prison officers Donnie was causing all this trouble fucking smashing his cell up and you know when they go on Donnie <laughs> encouraging him so the fucking door in my doors went click about ten o'clock at night and I went what the fuck's that that doors went they've only fucking picked to rang McDonald's they've come in they've dragged me out and there was a place called the Russian Mile and uh, Glen Oak, all the boys are not, it's a big long corridor. They're knocking fuck out of me. <laughs> Hank me, Hank Nam, Donny McDonald's. <laughs> They've got me down to the fucking segregation uh-huh. unit. And I'm fucking battered fuck out of And I'm sure I saw the governor the next day, I went, fuck you now. I said, where the fuck was that? They says, ah, you're shouting out your window and all that, blah, 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 blah. You've smashed your cell up. And one of the officers says, no, we got the wrong guy. <laughs> but by this time, I'd been knocked fuck uh, out. Black and blue. So that, that, that was me. And uh, I'd been, I, I got out and uh, I went to Glen Oco Young Offenders about another two times, three months, six months. It was always sentences. And uh, I don't know, you're saying all these sentences, man, but it's every fucking. Oh, it's always As soon as you're out, you're no, back I mean, in two weeks later. No, it was a good education, it's getting me <laughs> fucking wider. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to get the ladder. You just rhymed off every jail in UK, there, I'm married before you're 18. Oh, I've not even started yet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's, there's a lot of things to try and remember. So, Glen Oco, I've been another couple of times in there. And while I was in Glen Oco, young offenders, Alan, my brother, he'd been in St. John's, he was a younger brother. He's ended up in detention, and my wee, my God bless her, she, she says to she says, I he needed a d- bit of discipline. And this Glen Oco Young Offenders, it was a detention centre. you done eight weeks. It was a sharp shock treatment, right? And uh, they had about running and fucking there's acid toothbrush and the flare and the bed blocks. And, but they got, they got all the best of food. 
but it was a solid eight weeks of training. And that was to, to try and put people off of crime, just like the boss, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And uh, my ma, I always remember my ma saying is, she says, I, I walked in, because Alan thought it was a wee bit gal, so it was all. She says, you had the march in and all that. She, she burst out and, and tring me, shout, and you had to sit down this way and all that, and had to, his back, and he was all polite. And <laughs> my ma says, I, that's what he needed. They kick, they kick up the arse, but he got into trouble as well. But uh, mo moving on from there, uh, the Glen Oakle a couple of times, then at 20. That's when you started getting into the serious stuff, wasn't it? No, 19, sorry, 19, I started getting into serious stuff. Paul Ferris was pals with Alan, my young brother, and Paul was 16 at the time. And uh, I had knew him and, that, and he used to come round to my mum's house and stay and that, with Alan and that. And, uh, and he always knew I was up to skullduggery. I'd, I'd graduated, I says, fuck all this, I'm moving up. So I moved up to jewellery robberies and I was doing a lot of running around Hugging Fuel Lock and uh, to keep myself fit in case I get a chance to get away. So Paul says to Alan one day, he says, what is it, Blinks then? He says, he's always out fucking running Hugging Fuel Lock. And he says, Paul, he says, didn't what? He says, well, he's graduated into jewellers. No, I mean, he says, what do you mean? He says, he goes in and runs out. He says, he's going to put a word in for me. And uh Paul came to see me and I says, I ain't any bother, bro. I says, uh, Paul was working at the time. He was working for a spirit company and all that, uh, delivering spirits and all that. I think that was the only job he had at the time as well. And uh, Paul Paul came with me. I think we went to Dunfermline or somewhere. And I, I always planned a route and all that, a mile, two miles away from the place. And uh, I says to Paul, I says, look, I says, I died up this jewelers and we'd park the car and we'd get the route in case I get a chase. I says, we're back in 10 minutes. I was back in nine, jumped in the car, three rings, they were three or four thousand pounds. 1980, that was a lot of money then, you know what I mean? I think we got about 500 pounds each or something. I says, you're doing the next one. I went, what? I says, you're doing the next one. So we done that and uh, I'm not ashamed to say about myself, but we ended up getting a reputation for serious violence as well. We'd seal Stanley Blades out of B and Q, and me and Paul were getting into the town and we got into Jamaica Inn, and uh, Ultratech was one of my favourite places in Wellington Street, and uh, some places he was at Knockback for and all that, and me, him and another few pals were called the Stanley Gang, and... Uh, the time, the time I was trying my 20, I'd cut about 12 or 13 people, but I was only trying to get in there first. And uh, we came to the attention of the godfather, Arthur Thompson. I'd went to school with Margaret, his daughter, and young Arthur, I knew young Arthur. And I forgot to say, young Arthur, I was in the Army Cadets as well, James. Mm -hmm. When I was 13, young Arthur was in it as well. It was a place called A Caledonia in West Princess Street, out at the West End, off Woodlands Roads. And a crowd for Black Hill used to go there. And uh, so Paul says to me, we've been thinking we went to the problem of the morrow. And I had an idea, because we were coming to recognition of what we were doing. Was that the name you were making for yourself? Uh, you your damage or the robberies? Uh, the something? damage and the, the stealing the, the robberies and that, and the cutting and all that. And I says, no, I'm not going. So he went and saw me the next day. He says, look, he says, young Arthur's recruited me. He says, uh, he says, they're talking about a lot of money and all that. And I says, well, look, Paul, I says, you're going to be a debt collector. I says, while well, Arthur's sitting in, his, in the Ponderosa uh, on his leather chair, watching Minder drinking brandy and smoking a cigar, mm -hmm. I says, you're going to be a bail bondsman. He says, I but they're seeing a lot of money. I says, stick with me. I says, I'm going higher. Because at the time, I mean, Paul, we were doing the jewellers, not just running in and out, with the trays, we'd graduated smashing the windies as well. And uh, getting more stuff out of them. I just crashing the fucking windy in during the day, you know what I mean? You know, other places. But uh, we'd done that many stuff. We had to graduate to get into England. We'd fucking rattled nearly everywhere in Scotland. <laughs> and but, I was a great believer in you know, Hadrian Wall and mm -hmm. Robin English. 
<laughs> you track it on your Robin so Hood. So <laughs> we we'd, we'd done a lot of things then, that, and that that was before. So I says to him, I says, Paul, I says, I wish you luck. I says, but I'm going to do a main thing. And uh, I was about 22 at the time. And fuck's sake, you're only still young boys. Oh, we were only young boys. Uh, but it was it was wild. Black Hill and Proven Mill. There was people that were going up with the crombies and the boots and all that and big steakies and you 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 would see all this, you know what I mean? So it, it wasn't a, it wasn't really see my dad left. It wasn't a surprise me getting into that, James, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But as I say, my dad, strict discipline and good ranger supporter, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I know everybody will be watching us, you know. He likes his rangers, Rangers, Rangers. Uh, that's about uh, 10 times like, he's made I'm them. I'm not scared to say, because <laughs> all, all my family and, uh, and all my pals, mm -hmm. my pals, you Celtic. Aye, aye. But I've no, I've, I don't hold that against anybody, you know what I mean, but... So he hopefully says, no. the, hopefully, so he wouldn't leave this year. <laughs> Come on, Stevie, get the thing out. You're doing well. So, this was what, 22? And then it's 22, James. And uh, I think I was, I think I get jailed in at 22. I, this is what happened. I'm trying to remember here. There's that many to say, you know what I mean? At 22, I was wanted for about 10 Julia robberies. I didn't know this at the time. And at the time as well, I had a car and two guys stepped in front of me and tried to stop me and I looked him up there. I didn't realise it was at 2 CID for Bird Street. So they were looking for me for attempted murder and about 10 jewellery robberies. And at that time, uh, I think it was 1982-83, between 83 it was, uh, I got a passport. See the passports now, it's 10-year passports mm -hmm. at that time, James. It was a yearly passport. You could get into George Square, big post office, get somebody else's uh, date of birth and put your photo, a year passport. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. No, no it's no, all chipped. And this, is really, aye. This, this is what you've done. So apparently mine's gave me that. I get the passport. And uh, I knew the police were looking for me, you know what I mean? So I fucked off to Benidorm. First time abroad. Stayed there for six weeks, came back, and I was on the plane. I was all tanned, you know, I had this T-shirt that says cocaine and all that, and white shorts. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I had this fucking big donkey, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and that, this, uh, the, the thing we touched down at Glasgow Airport, this is the first of three times I've been arrested at an airport, by mm. the way, right? And it, <clears throat> the next minute, this guy came on for Bird Street, I think his name was McVicker, you know what I mean? He was always chasing me a bit, and another guy. But I would, I would, I had a heavy tanning knot on me and all that. No, a tan marked my face, but a tan <laughs> fucking bad <laughs> with the sun. <laughs> no, I mean, and fucking the plane stopped and says, Would everybody sit down? And uh, nobody's getting off now. And this McVicken is shouting, Dean McDonald, Dean McDonald. And, pff, I'm sitting my pal, you know what I mean? What? He walked right by me, he didn't know it's me. So, I says to my pal, take that donkey. I says, that's for my man, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've got the cocaine t-shirt, the white t-shirts. <laughs> and and I, I've ran all the way up to the thing mm -hmm. there, the passport control. And I've given them the thing, expecting to go through. The Vollocks and this McRicker and the rest of them all came out. They went, good try. And I went, what do you mean good try? I says, my name's Joseph. They went, no, no, good try. Snibs. Who did you come back so, for? I'd, I'd, see, see the time James and, and, and still the now mm -hmm. I, I've always wanted to go to Spain or go abroad to stay but I'm a family man you miss it back I, I, miss, I miss my man uh, mm -hmm. at, see the time at 22 the sun was too hot mm -hmm. us Glaswegians are Fry. used to a bit of rain ah. and that. so that was the reason I came back but I didn't think I was going to get caught because I was still using this passport mm -hmm. but somebody grasped me you know what I mean Did that's they? what happened I, somebody definitely grasped me I found out who it was I like slashed the guy for it. Knew then you were coming no, I mean, back? Aye, aye. Why would somebody stick you in? Because I had a bit of trouble with this guy, so oh, I just dear. fucking slashed him in the outside Panama Jacks one night. I know I might sound a bit of a thug, but no, I'm not a thug. Well, you, well, you've admitted no, you, I mean, you, you've you accepted all that this life a criminal. Anyway. So what happened was... But that's not really any good, is it? It's not something down. Bird Street, same ID parades, still in fucking all the place, couple in England, but 
this one in Kaleo, this lassie, and uh, only took one person in Kaleo to ID, didn't he, too? And she says, right, it's definitely him. So I got 18 months at Durham, and uh, I was in Durham. Was that for all the, the jewellers as well? Aye, it was just, no, I get, thing me, they, they couldn't approve the ones. I got 18 months in Berlin, sorry, for the copper, they reduced that. He never, he wasn't a temp murder, it was just fucking hurt in the bonnet. Aye. And for okay, and thing, we got 18 months for that, and uh, this was 83. I played guilty that like 18, I was charged 18 months for the copper hitting them with the motor. Then they transferred me down to Durham. And there was a pal of mine, Albert Moffat, that came for, came for Casamilk. And uh, Albert was going down to England as well. He was going down for a fraud charge and he wanted scrubs. So they joked to me off at Durham because I'm waiting to go to Carlisle Court. And Albert, I've known Sir Albert for years, but me and him used to go out and do the jewellers as well, you know what I mean? And uh, what happened is I'm lying in my bed, lying to my bed, reading this magazine or something. And my radio, you want to tell us that they come into years later, so you've got the radio and that, and it came on and Albert Moffat for Glasgow getting accused of slashing his Donald Nelson. See the guy, done the 16 guys for in London. He strangled them all. And I think the 16 victims never get killed because uh, there was a clip on tie the rest of you once. His, <laughs> his name's D Dino Nelson. He came from And it was a serial killer. Oh, it was a serial killer. I get done with about 15. The only reason they caught him is because. He was taking them back to his house and he was killing them and he, he was boiling them up and all that and the, the drains was smelling of fucking bodies and somebody's reported that. Oh, it's a big case, sake. you know what I mean? He originally came from Aberdeen, this guy. So, seeing this is Albert Moffat, I mean, for fuck's sake, Albert, I can't believe that. So, uh, I'm getting back. I just remember my brother Gary, after he got out of... Jailsland, a uh, proof school. Gary, uh, he got done up at the Broomfield Garage for uh, stabbing somebody and he got Boston. Then for there, he was only a couple of months, he was 19, and he was at St Rocks, you know, St Rocks Junior Park. Aye, aye, aye. There used to be a social club there, James, and Gary was along there. I was up in Longer again at the time. So you Mark. and your, 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 the free years were always in the jail, weren't you? Oh, you aye, the free, the free years, that, that was us. We were Do you just have a, a reputation then? Um, aye, we were start, starting to kind of a Build it up, you know mm. what I mean? The freeze. Yeah, there, the, there was the freeze. They called us the Stanley Gang and a couple other pals, you know mm. what I mean? And uh, but there was a lot of older guys in black coat. It was the kiddies at the time, and uh, they were kind of a bullies. But when we got a bit older, we got them back. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We didn't forget. And uh, so my brother Gary, eight years, he was at the rock club, and uh, it was a social club there, and he met this lassie. Lassie's like, oh, you want to go back to mine? She said, no, I'll come back to my ma's and that from mill. So we didn't the lassies doing it at Cold Street Flats where my granny used to stay. Go to the door, this guy opened the door and the guy went, who the fuck are you? And Gary went, who the fuck are you? And he went, that's my bird. The guy got cheeky and Gary just pulled out a Stanley and cut his throat, you know what I mean? So Gary got eight years for that. He was 19. And uh, I was in London again at the time for something. And... Somebody says to me, Well, your brother's freaking on reception. Eight years. I went, eh, eh, No, you seen attempted murder. I went, What? And uh, I saw he was in. And I was like, Oh, fuck, he's in trouble here. You know what I mean? Because we hadn't done big senses. It's only been Aye, boss to six months, six Gary three, months. Six, three months mm -hmm. and that. Uh, the 18 month. And uh, this is before the Kaleo thing. I'm going back. Just for me, I'm just going back a bit. And uh, so I'm in this long regent for a shite, shite, shite hole. It's out near Green Gears and Airdrie. So I'd done something to put me in the fucking the block or the segregation unit for three days. So I says, fuck guys, they took me out for exercise. And I was watching this fucking pool get up to the roof. So one day I says, fuck guys, I've had enough. And I try to run for the pole and I slivvied right up it. I started throwing slates at the screws. <laughs> the like, Ian, come down, come down. I says, I'm coming down, fuck all. Gary was away to court that day. You know what I mean? For something. And uh thing me that this Jimmy Hall, he he was a, a screw in long again. People would know him. He used to always go to the, 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 the kitchen and he'd put chips or a pie in the top we see with his hat. 
She was known as Jimmy the Pie Man, you know what I mean? Used to put chips in his hat? Ah, his hat and a fucking a, a pie and all that in his hat and walk out there and eat it. The miserable <laughs> cunt wouldn't he fucking buy his stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> so he was a bastard as well, this cunt. He, he moved to Berlin as well, right? And uh, a, a right dog. And uh, so the day I was up on the roof, they eventually got me down, you know what I mean? No, before I'd fucking threw fucking half, half the slates in the roof. You know what I mean? The governor's, the governor's shouting up, Ian, please come down. He he was only fucking shouting because he knew through an Edinburgh home office he'd probably lose his fucking job because mm -hmm. I think it caused about £50,000 of damage or something. So Gary's come back, he got told, him and another few boys set themselves in fire and I'm doing in the, the block in Long Regent. There was only three cells uh, thing with there, believe it or not, in the segregation unit. Um, the reason I'm saying the block, because in England they call the segregation the block, and in Scotland it's the primary segregation unit, know what I mean? Or the digger, know mm -hmm. what I mean? Call it the digger. Right. But, uh, so I'm down there, and I hear all this shouting and all that. Uh, I've come down for the roof, know what I mean? And uh, the next mate, Gary's been fucking old, and, and I've heard his voice. And they came to my door and they went, aye, you ain't a fucking big man. He says, we're batting your fucking brother. I could hear Gary screaming, and uh, but he was naked. But they went away, and I shouted. And I shouted, "Is that you, Gary?" He went, "Aye." And he went, "My boys are killing me." He says, he says, he says, he had handcuffs in the back of him, and he says, he kept fucking punching his balls. I says, "Oh fuck them!" So the next day, they took me, Gary, and another guy away, and uh, we thought we were going to kill stairs. We were all young boys, mm -hmm. and uh, yep. took us to Berlin. And they says to us, they says, look, it was highly unusual because we were under 20, you know what I mean? And they says to us, look, they says, uh, any more shite for you? They says, you what you're, you're getting a tanking, right? So Gary was a couple of cells of length for me and he's waiting to get up for this attempt murder. We're slashing the guy's throat. I'm in for a stupid charge at the time. And uh, but I thought he was going to get about four years and maybe even get away with it. So the case came up. And a uh, screw came into me this day. Gary was away. One day, we thought the trial was going to be three or four days. And a screw came into me, took me like a toilet. He went, oh, your brother's just come back eight years. I went, ah, oh, he's fucking danger eight years. He's 19 at the time. That's a big sense at that time. Mm -hmm. I'll be back in 1981, you know what I mean? And uh, so we used to go up in the bars like we monkeys. And the uh, thing we had shouted, I says, Gary, Gary. And so I went, I get fucking eight years. I says, eight fucking year. I says, what happened? He says, fucking, he says, oh, he came in, stuck his in, and fucking, he says, I think the, the, the judge was dying, got away that day, and the, the case just finished that day, and he gave him eight year. I was like, fuck, I felt sorry for him. I went, eight fucking year, fucking hell, is he going to get through that? Mm. So I ended up getting out, and Gary, he went up to Glen Oco, YOI, and he got transferred for there, I think. He went down to the hot plate one morning and he's he got a boiled egg or something like that and he complained. And uh, he says something, what was it? He says to this girl, he says, that boiled egg's fucking soft or something. And the screw, the screw says, look, just, just fucking take it. And uh, he says something next minute and Gary chinned him. So he got moved into a place down in Dumfries uh, it was called Jesse Field, but now it's known as Dumfries Prison, you mm. know what I mean? At that time, in 81, 82, it was a young offenders. And uh, so Gary's down there, I know the mad mob for Glasgow are down there as well. And they were all doing lifers and all that, James, and uh, eight years, another pal of mine, Sarri, was in there. And uh, me and Albert Moffat, who I mentioned earlier, mm. we borrowed a car off my pal Star Keenan for Royston. And uh, I was 22 at the time, and we were all suited up and went to Gary. And at that time, there was need, it was the vinyl discs, there was groups called, a group called Men at Work for Australia, Blondie, Breakfast in America, Serial Tramp, uh, Super Tramp. Mm. So we got these things for them, and we had a big block, a uh, Pakistan, it's okay, in Hashish, mm -hmm. right, for the two of them. So we went to visit, suited up, and there was a place called, and then the tune called The Warehouse Dancing. It was in Dunlop Street. And uh, 
there was a place next to it called the Mardi Gras. There was a guy, Michael Maudlin, owned it. So we used to go there, you know what I mean? And uh, just off Clyde Street. And then, so we went in and saw them, gave Gary and Clary their freaking hash, put their records and all that. And so Albert went like to me, he says, listen, he says, do you want to go to Moffat, his name's Moffat, do you want to go to Moffat Ruling Mills? Just buy them free. He says, I'll get myself a sheepy. So the age in, like 22. 35 years ago. Is that what had the mean? pouches in them? Eh? Is that what they had the pouches in them? Aye, they had, they had lots of so right, good sheep skinning and, and we, we were good at the shoplifting as aye, well. Because I well. had pouches in them, uncles aye. and that. old man used to speak about it. Used aye, to get records they, they and were all good. There was the business in, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we were in there and we took the bugs off and we put them on, they saw as we walked to it in the car. We were like, oh, I've walked into the warehouse tonight in Glasgow with sheepies mm -hmm. and all that one. The suit. So what's the mother well and tricky in the next minute? It's tricky and this van, one copper in it, siren. I says, I, oh, but you must be fucking uh, speeding. And uh, we stopped a copper, it was only one copper. Because I'd be like, I says, if they'd have saw us, we would have been caught manoeuvring. Mother well, know what I mean? But there was nowhere to run of that anywhere. And I heard them saying to Albert, Albert, Albert was good in the party. They were like that with the suits and that on. They went, they just come through Moffat Mullen, Moffat Mullen will be any chance. And we went, no, they says, we've just came for Leeds. I heard Albert go like that. We're car dealers. We've just come back up. He went, would you mind uh, me looking in your boot? And we've got reports say, thing me, this car was in Moffat. He's been, and there's two sheepskins. And he went, no, not at all. And I'm listening to Albert. Right, we funny man, know what I mean? But he was good <laughs> at it. And he uh, opened the boot. And saw the two sheep skins and Albert went, No, 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 no. He says, We bought them down at the market, down at Leeds. You know what I mean? And uh, Screw went and had a look at it. Albert had forgot to take his tag off. It says, Moffat Ruling Mills. Mm -hmm. So he went, He's a knack. So I was ready to run out of the car. I went, Oh, isn't he? We went to run to Before you know it, we're on our way back. So we're, we're in this, this was a Sunday. So we're in Dumfries Police Station that night. And uh, I was like, myself, This is going to be funny if we get remanded tomorrow. We're going to give the screw, the screw we gave the visit pass to get into Dumfries. He's going to be there from the back to stay. So we went to Dumfries, pled guilty, expecting a fine. But I think people at Dumfries thought as well as regions were off on that. And all the rest, we were in. Which is true. Like that. Yeah, it was true. So they were like that. So I, I called it, I was going to call it in the chapter, uh, Two Wolves in Sheep's Clothing, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But I called it something else. And because uh, it was so it was so comical, you know what I mean, for these two sheepies. So the sheriff remanded us to the same place. It was a wee remand bit in Dumfries, Chesterfield. Mm -hmm. So we drove up. I says, This is going to be a fucking laugh, this, you know what I mean? We'd only been there the day before, hundred and hash and fucking CDs and the old record things. And uh, the screw noticed us right away and I went, For fuck's sake, what you used in back? And he shouted to this group, phone out the whole tail McDonald and trucking his pal at their back. Fuck's sake. And uh, so we went into this remand and we're shouting out the windies and I'm I'm trying to get a bit of this fucking ash, you know what I mean? So Gary <laughs> the hash shouts, that you'd put in the day before. Aye, so Gary <laughs> shouts. So they put me out, me and Albert in together. So he shout, look, the only way you're gonna go and see is it'll be Thursday. It says the next two mornings you don't see you've got the fucking toothic. So we went down see within the toothic. And uh, Gary says he'll be up there, him and his pal. And uh, he says, we'll give you a bit of this ash. We went, right, okay. This is the dentist. I'm saying my teeth are really bad and all that. So we're up there and the screws tippled. Gary and I came in and they went, no, no, you're, you're not seeing them. He says, you've just went to the dentist so you could see them. You know what I mean? He went, for fuck's sake, we're not in the Stone Ages. Mm -hmm. For fuck's sake, let me talk to my brother. No. So I get into the dentist, the guy's like that. I put my head back and he's well like that. Fucking hell. He says, uh, you've got two bad teeth out. Before I knew it, he's pulled two bad teeth out. I fucked out. Fucking blood all his Albert way like that. Fuck that. I'm all right. I'm not going in. So we get back to our cell. We're up at the window shouting, Gary, Harry, you pair of pricks. I says, I've got two fucking teeth <laughs> took out. No, that. So that, 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 that was just Jesse Field, the madness. Aye, so we went to court and... Uh, they ended up getting his free month for that, know what I mean? Another free month. J just for visiting. But your biggest I mean? sentence came when you were 30, wasn't it? Aye, when, when I was 30. Year, wasn't when, it? when I was 30, James, uh, just before it, I was still doing things, know what I mean? I was still doing Robins and that. 
Now and again, no, I mean, I'd graduated, but I wasn't full pelt, and I met a lassie, and uh, we ended up taking her a pub up in Springburn, a talisman. It's, it's, it's a pure wreck, you know, no, I mean, it should actually be condemned. So we took this pub there, and uh, I was I was 26 when I met Sheila, 27. She's the last that's got me, my son Darrow to mm -hmm. So we took the pub there, and it was a rough pub, as you know, up there. And they were all selling smack and fuck knows what. And I said to the boys, I said, like, can you do this? We're going to make this a good pub. Blah, 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 blah. The smoke and hash. So we go to all fucking painting and all that. And people were coming in before the pub was opening. They were saying, listen, Ian, this is, uh, this is so and so, bar them, blah, 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 blah. I says, they can't get bad. I says, everybody's got a fresh start here. And it turned out, James, that the people it was saying bar them, they were the, they were the worst cats. Mm -hmm. They were getting bad. So the boys were smoking hash and that, and I couldn't be a hypocrite. I smoked hash and that. But the old brigade where your money is for your hoffs and your hoffs, they were going, look, there's fucking hash. So I says to the boys, look, I'm going to get something sorted. So there was a, a spare room in the, in the, in the bar. And the boys, there was a domino team, but they'd broke up by the time we took... So I went to find me Sims Aut Automatics up in Mary Hill. I got a big pool table. I says to all the young troops, come here. I says, go in there and smoke your heart's content with ash. I went, seriously? I went, seriously? Just, but don't come out this fucking door. I thought that was great, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And uh, so we, we, we were in the pub then. And uh, in there a couple of years and that. And the time came to 30. I was doing well. I'd, I'd had a flat on the south side the time I was 25 you know what I mean and she had a, a flat at Southview uh, Terrace across the Ashfield Motors mm. I don't know if you'd remember that you were too young nah. and it's just at uh, Stoke Pill and uh, at the time I had a wee XR2 with a house in the Spam Valley that's Bishop Briggs in, in Fingley uh, and she was so sold us and moved up to Bishop Briggs. But we were in this pub, not 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 a bit of hassle. And uh, I used to keep a shotgun behind the bar in case there was any hassle, you know what I mean? Do. As you do, you know <laughs> what I mean, in Glasgow. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, we, we never we never really get any trouble. And at the back, this pub was so big, we, we ended up getting a flat dinner up, up the stair. And uh, we were staying in it, and it was great. My ma was working in it. And uh, Thing a couple of my cousins and that. Just watch for that, mate. Uh, is it all right? You hear it all right? Is that mate? Okay, aye. No, it's all right. Aye, well, so, just... so anyway, that time's fair. We were doing well. I had a caravan in Anstrud and all that. But then a pal appeared up at the pub, uh, Mick Keeley, for Shuttles and I knew him for being in Berlin. I was in for a shooting at the time. I got away with it. I was expecting 10 year. And uh, Mick got 10 year for, for this post office. So... He went up to shots and he was only up shots uh, 10 months and he escaped in a butcher van. He's the only guy to this day that's actually escaped. When people say they escaped from a prison, open prisons you just walk out, but shots is a high security prison, whereas it's hard to get out. But Mick went out in the van and he was away. He turned up at the pub this day. <laughs> After just escaping? No, he, he, was, he was away for about a year, uh -huh. a year and a half. And he'd come back. He'd been in Germany and England, everywhere, you know what I mean? And uh, he's quite a smart character, Mick. And he came up and he says, listen, he says, I've been in Turkey. He says, I'm buying a bank up, £6 million. Would you be interested? And I went, aye, of course I would. But uh, I says, is it a go? And he says, well, I'm going to get away for a couple of months, get everything sorted out, and I'll be back to see you. Well, he came back to see me. <sighs> he just walked in the door and my answer was aye. Because I always wanted to be the age of 30, I wanted to be a millionaire, James. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always wanted to go to my beer, open up my nightclub. You must have been close, but in at that age. Well, at that age, I was doing no bad, but I figured I've got away with that turn. I was doing turns at the time for 100,000, a couple of hundred grand, you know what I mean? And uh, But two and three wee splits. But I was always a spender, James. I, I'm, I've been a nightclub guy if I was 17 years of age, if I came out to Boston. 
and it was always I was always spent for the day in case you're not here the morning. Do you think you spent a lot, but because there was a good chance you might have been back in the jail, do you think you were trying to enjoy it as much as you can? Or, or unless I get killed. Aye. Aye. That that's that that was the, the reason because always uh, people always used to say it, but still say, How did you know I used to say money says, How did you know just put a lot by? I used to say, I was the opinion I might be dead tomorrow. Aye. Be a bus or freaking you know, <laughs> whatever. Mm-hmm. So but Mick, so I, I've agreed to that. And uh, me and his brother went down, we, we, we left for Glasgow. We were going down to Torquay. It was down at Torquay. This was May 1991. I was I was just trying to turn 30. I had a, a young boy at the time, he just turned two. He was born in uh, Stockpile in 89. And uh, we were staying in Crow Hill Road at the time up at Spam Valley, mm-hmm. as I told you. Did you know why they called it Spam Valley and Bishop? No fellow snobs and uh, because uh, they were saving thing me they were eating spam so they could pay their mortgage. Aye. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So aye, you heard about the kid they've given. <laughs> so that, that's what they called it. <laughs> and uh, so I, I says, fuck it, get a go, you know what I mean? N- never thinking I was gonna be caught. Never, never not not one second. So me and Mick's brother we were designated to take the guns, balaclavas, handcuffs, down to Turkey. So we jumped in, uh, he came to meet me, we had the two bags, we jumped in a private taxi, and we says, don't go to Central, we are in the train. So we went to Motherwell, we were going through Strathclyde Park, and uh, before you know it, the fucking police, it's a motor outrider, he's waving the fucking taxi down, and I says to my pal, I went, Fucking hell, he says, we've been down here. I says, we're getting a nick already. But the guy just went like to taxi driver, slow down, mate, you're going too fast. So I thank fuck. So we got to Motherwell, go to London. We were walking about the fucking Houston Station with guns, not the police or other place. And I think we jumped to train to Exeter. And Mick and the other boys, mate, as there, they'd stolen cars and that, and fucking had a hired car and a false ID and all that. So they took us back and says, look, we're we're basing ourselves on a caravan site and uh, we're basing a car- caravan site in painting there's a uh, painting in Torquay there's three main places there's painting Torquay and Brixham Vic- Brixham's a fishing village so we're based there and uh, I ended up I ended up getting Sheila done and we moved to uh, just out at the seaside that thing with Anita Shally. She came down with the rain. And uh, her plan was Sheila used to be married to an Iranian. Her plan was to go down to London once I thought I was getting a million pounds. We were going to go down to London. She was going to get into a bank safety deposit box, speak Iranian. She stayed there, there for six years, put the money in, up to Glasgow, then off. That was the sort of a plan. And uh but Mick, while he was on the run, he met these two lasses. And uh, he, met, he met this lassie, sorry, in London. And uh, her name was Sandrine Baby. And she had a sister called Natalie Baby. They came from Mount, Mount Pelia in France. So Mick says, after a few days when we were down there, he went, I'm going to get a thing with that lassie from France earlier to blend in as tourists. I went, for fuck's sake. I says, what are you going to tell her? He says, tell her to she might come for a holiday. <laughs> and, she, and, and she phoned me, she says, can I bring my, my sister, uh, thing me, Sandrine, I think it was, and he was going, aye. So there was, she came down, and there was another boy, Tam Carrigan and Tam Harper there. And uh, we were going to put the, we were going to put the pub and all that, but while we were there, we were reconnaissing the bank, and at that time in ninety one, they never had alarms in the in the bank. They just an alarm in the vault, and this was a holding centre for the Nat West, the Phil of Devon. So they reckon there was six million pound there. So her plan was to break into it, hold them up, take the money, and go. You know what I mean? So, but for that two weeks, we were just acting as normal tourists. Fuck, I even went to the zoo. <laughs> with the Wayne and with the Wayne and fucking the missus. Uh-huh. And we went to this sports centre and fucking we were in there and 
I tried to play badminton, no, I couldn't play it. But years later, I became an internationalist in the fucking neck there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, so it came to D-Day, -Day, but two days before it, I'd been out in the car with Tam Carrigan and Robert Harper, and we get pulled with the coppers. We'd sweetie rappers and we threw them out the fucking windy. Copper pulled us who are you? And I gave my brother Gary's name. So we get back, we told Mick, James, and that. And uh, Tam and Rab went, We've got a bad feeling about this. He says, We're getting off. I went, For fuck's sake, you can't do it. So, so they, the two boys got off and uh, it left us to go through with the robbery. So they were away and the robbery, the back door was drilled to get in the back door. And there was a inside at the back of the bank. It was a big bank. There was three flares, and uh, in the back of the bank there was a like a holding centre and a, a staircase, and you could see the vault. So there was a stair at the bottom of the staircase. There was a hidey hole constructed where you could fit inside it. You know what I mean? But I was doing there the first night, and there was a pool table and all the rest of it, and. Contrary to contradictions, I would like to put this straight. A lot of people say, no, you were saying you were in the bank, blah, 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 blah. But I'll tell you, you know, anybody that's listening, I wasn't in the bank when the bank got raided. When Mick came up to the pub, he says, Ian, he says, I'll make it easy for you. He says, see if you agree to it. He says, I can trust you 100%. He says, I know you're going to the bank, no bother. He says, but will you sit outside in the car? Because I know you'll no go away. I went... <laughs> So you want so you want me to sit in the car? I says I. I went hi. I was shocked at that. I was mm. quite willing to get in the bank. No, it's an easier. Oh, an easier job, but mm. I was, so I would have went anyway. So, but other people have been saying that I was saying, "Oh, I was in the bank." I was in the, but to put it straight to yourself, James, I was in the bank first night when it broke into. Right, there was no alarms in the in the bank. There was up there the pool tables for the bank to, I think there was about 18 staff in there. They used to get up there for lunch break. So we'd playing pool and all that. And the, the hidey hole got constructed and the remote was putting the dustpan and all the fucking dirt and that away. So once that was done, I went back, I went out the bank and I went back to the caravan site where my missus was. And the two French lasses, they don't know what's happening. Mick name says we're out somewhere, so we went to bed. So I went back, and I was to go back to the bank about half seven, sat outside, it's half seven, eight or seven. It was just after eight or seven. And uh, funny enough, I was watching the TV in the the caravan. Guess what I was watching? The Sweeney. Mm -hmm. Kids were doing a bank. Uh, bank robbery. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going for fuck's sake, yeah. I'm going... This time tomorrow, I could be a fucking millionaire. No, I will be a millionaire. Like only fools no, I mean? and horses. Ah, uh, so I will be a fucking millionaire. No, I mean, because mm -hmm. when you do things like that, you don't expect to get caught. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, you can't get in that frame. No, like they two boys that have left, they've got feeling. I'm off. I'll tell you, there was a good story about they two as well. What happened mm -hmm. after it? But they, they done. No, I mean, they just didn't fucking out and say we're away. But uh, so is this at eight o'clock at night? This is at eight o'clock in the morning. This is. Right. Eight o'clock, half eight in the morning. And they're in the bank. They're in the bank. They they were into the hiding. Were they hole. playing pool or that in the bank? Is that aye, right? Aye, playing pool upstairs and all that. <laughs> While they're ready to rob it the next aye, day. Aye, it was freaking that's unbelievable. And uh, so they went and put themselves in the, the hiding hole. So the first plan was if the other boy wouldn't have fucked off, when the door the, the door the first person that came in, right? There was a system, a rotor, where when he was in, the next person in the bank had turned up, pressed the bell, he'd open the door and bring him in. So everything changed because the other two boys went away, Carrigan and Harper. Uh, the plan was then just let them all come in, then jump out and gather them up. Because what they were going to do is go to the door, first person come in, then go and just pull them in, tie them up. So at the end of the day, there was about 16 people tied up, gun pointed at them and all that. Right. Now what they've done is, the, see for the hidey hole, they saw the, the thing with opening the, the vault and they've come out with a trolley. So the boys jumped out right in, but 
that th this bank vault, you went into it, then there was another gate, and that took you up to the treasury rail gate, and all the cash was sitting there. And they uh, ran back out and like, where's the fucking money? Where's the key for this? So the manager, I think his name was Brian something, he was trying to say, look, listen, see the guy that's got the key, Roy, the chief cashier, he's late for his work. So we only having all that, just just thought they were playing fucking past the parcel. So a shotgun got fired, and it's always been says in the newspapers and all that, and you know, stories come up that there was a woman shot in the head. That's what I heard. Aye, well, th th this is, this is there's, a, there's a wee bit true to that, but the, the, the shotgun was fired into the ceiling as a warning. Stop fucking about. The plaster came down, hurt this young lass in the head, and they were all screaming, she's been shot. That, that's, that's the honest so truth. So nobody died? Na nobody died. Uh, years later, James, I'll tell you later, uh, actually, the Torquay Herald, when, when the thing came up with the bomb and the slashing with me, they, they'd heard about it down there, and, and through a journalist, go and touch Kadeen, talk about the, the bang, and would they be willing to apologise to the, the lassie and putting them all through, and i have done that story. But anyway, what, what happened was... Uh, the boys thought that the manager and that the, the manager declared his cell and he got ran into the fucking bars, shotgun, get put his head, open that fucking vault and he's shouting, I can't, I can't, I've no key. So guns went down and uh, by that time, fucking the doorbell was ringing. It was Roy, the chief cashier, and the manager was trying to say, look, let me go to the door. I'll open the fucking door and that's that. But see, see when we went to court, it was like a comedy error. Most of the staff was saying, see, because of your thick Glasgow accents, mm -hmm. they were saying it was Jamaicans. <laughs> 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 they said they were Italian, Jamaicans, this and that. Mm -hmm. and so the boys just ran out in the car, away, so back to the caravan site. So how did you not open the door to let him in if that was a guy with the keys to the vault? We, we didn't believe him. Was it the guy with the it was, it was him as well. And that, you know he, I mean? he said six million. Aye, Could you see the six million? Aye, you could see the six million in, through the bars, you know what I mean? Fuck's sake. It was in the nest of the vault. And uh, that, that's what the guy kept saying, this guy, Brian, the manager, look, that will be Roy, the chief, he'll have this key. But at this time, just thought, I need bother. So the boys ran out, in the car, I think Mickey made his own way down. So we get back to the caravan site we were, I went in, my missus like, where's the money? <laughs> I went, no go to it. She went, fuck. So Mick came back, we're all gutted, came into my caravan. I went, look, he says, I'll need to get like these two two French lasses and tell, say to them, look, you just need to leave. I'll get them the fucking train and whatever. He says, listen, I forgot to tell you, with the excess stuff, because the other two boys went away, mm -hmm. with the excess stuff, it had to be fucking done away with. And Mick says he'd done that, but it hadn't been done. So me and his brother says, right, we'll get rid of it. So Sheila kept saying, like, you better get to fuck this. Is and it, see, because we never get the money, James. I just, I was sitting blasé saying, we'll get the money. It's not going to be a big inquiry. Deflated. But there's been a fucking gunfire and Aye. fuck knows what, and mm -hmm. it's been broken or planned and all the rest of it. So it's still as serious as it's just a, it's no just getting the money. She's just saying, no, I had that attitude, you know, just, she's going, let's go, and I'm going, make a breakfast and all that, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of just fucking off to London and that right away, we were going to go with tickets to get on the train. So me and James Healy went with his, went up to his caravan, got the two bags, but little did we know that seeing they'd, seeing they'd come out in the bank, they'd saw them jumping into the car, and we'd switched, they took the plate, and we swapped into another car. And uh, this guy, he was a painter and decorator, and he gave the, the registration number, but it wasn't the right one, and he had to compose the number and the go up. And it was a, a car that Mick Keeley had rented out and a false a false name. And uh, and it was thing we'd do at the caravan site. So two coppers arrived at the caravan site when me and James they were just taking these two bags there was three big ponds, it was massive as sight. We says, we'll just go down there and ditch them there, then we'll go up the camp and get to fuck. So as me and uh, James were walking down to the site, uh, down to this pond, he says to me, I think we're getting folded. I, went, I says, nah, don't be silly. So we go to this pond, 
open the two zips of the hold dogs to throw the stuff in. No, I mean, there were screwdrivers and all that, drills. There was excess fucking handcuffs and all that. And uh, flares and all that. So the next minute, some cunts just jumped out of bushes and went like that. Right, get down the fucking deck. My whole world just fucking went like that. I went, who the fuck's he? It was a guy, he was about six feet four, he had a leather jacket. He was holding to me, it looked like a 45 or a Magnum. And I says to James, I says, look, I says, don't fucking move us, can't they shoot us, right? So, see, see when we're lying down there, he's come down, James, to put the cuff on. Mm -hmm. But he's not put mine's on right. Mm -hmm. He's cuffed us two together. So, he was a big cunt, so he opened the bags, he fingered the bags, put me the shooters, and he had the gun. And he says, right, used to get up to the caravan you came for. So, we were going up to the caravan, we came for, and they went like that, no, get into that one. He'd been in observation. Uh, uh, observing us only for about half an hour how unlucky was that know what I mean so a couple of knew that was used and he just bumped into you by accident no what happened is that they'd went to the site see after the bank robbery uh -huh. and all that about an hour later they'd been to the site because this motor had uh, the hired car we had know what I mean under a different name that was thing we'd booked into the site and they came to the site and they says to the site manager, there's any dodgy characters, blah, 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 blah. And he says, oh, there's a group of people here for Glasgow. There's one got a scar. This was the other boy carrying, blah, 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 blah. And the car was there. So they set up thing me, but they couldn't see when they saw us walking. They, could, they, they couldn't see their, 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 their radios. Mm -hmm. Their radios, because they weren't, weren't they working. Any signal. So one of them says, I'll fool them, you go and get back up. So the time this guy arrested us, he said, and we're walking up and we're going, fuck, make sure we're going to do that stuff. So he puts into this caravan where they'd been. So see, instead of the guy, he went into the caravan, he's got gun on his weird cuffed, and he says, right, shut all the curtains. And instead of coming and sitting in with us, right, this all happened quick. He stood outside, and I'm sitting and I'm going like that. Fucking can't believe this, we're going to get 18 fucking years for this. So I'm sitting the next minute, my cuff just came up. And I went, fuck this. <laughs> there was people walking by and they were, we could look out. We would open the, the curtain a wee bit and we could see he's stoning with the bags and his leather jacket and his, his gun in his pocket. But people were going like that. Ah, hear me, what are you doing stoning there? He's like, get away, get away, I'm the police and all of that, right? And he was turning his back. And I says to my pal, the next time he turns his back, I says, I'm going for this living room right along the hall and out that back one day. He went, you'll get shot. I says, I don't give a fuck. By this time, I'd only done 18 months. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying... Which was your biggest sentence? Oh, th this, this this was going to be fucking 18 year, 20 year. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'd done. I said, you come? And he went, oh, I don't know, I don't know. I said, well, I'm going. So anyway, I get out the window. The whole fucking caravan was shaking. My pal was telling us after it. But the copper's back was turned. He was talking to somebody. So he never saw this. And I, I'd get the cuff off. I ran up to my caravan. Sheila's there with the way in. I says, I've just escaped, blah, 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 blah. And it attracts a jacket on to uh, put another one on. I says, look, you make your way down to London and I'll get you in there. I says, I need to get to fuck. But I didn't know where I was going. So I ran down to the painting with, with, with the beach, down to the beachfront. Mm -hmm. And I'm stoning with a pound on his gun. I should be having a million pound here instead of a pound. And, uh, and I went, where the fuck am I going to go for here? So, no money on his name, not for Torquay, you get to Glasgow, it's a big fucking ass, get it? <laughs> with a knicker on you. And the police are all going to come swooping shortly. So I've crawled up to this embankment, this railway, before you know there's a helicopter up. And my missus, she was telling us after it, she was going with the pram, and she saw James Seeley in the car. He never looked at her, you know what I mean? And she made her way to the train station, went down to Fingway, to Houston, went down to Elephant Castle. Uh, we'd relatives down there through, through my brother's wife so I made my way to this brick sam fishing village crawling and fuck knows what I went on the phone a couple of good pals told them what happened they says right listen they says we're going to go into the phone come back doing this says I've no money to record that and uh, we're on the phone they says look somebody's going to be doing it at 12 o'clock they're coming for London. Can you hang on? And then this was fucking two in the afternoon. I said, F -f -f hi. So I just went and I sat fucking in this woodland was and just lying about there. 
So I've creeped out at 12 o'clock and I see this boy there, you know, mm. and he's sweating like fuck. I wouldn't say his name. He's like that, ah, and I jumped in, and he's like that. Ah, fucking hell. He says, What happened there? I says, Oh, go ask. So I went back to his house. He stayed in Kensington, and uh, we're sitting there and we're having a couple of joints. It was about five in the morning by this time. They went like that. He says, Look, I'm fucked. He says, If you're fucked, go up. So the thing, I hadn't even saw his wife yet. He says, Go up to that room. He says, and uh, he says, just sleep up there. He says, no, see in the morning. He says, he says, I'm going to stay here and just another couple of joints. So a couple of years later, I'm, I'm fucking getting shaked a bit. And uh, I thought it was his pals playing a fucking thing. We wind up. You know what I mean? They're going, ah, drug squad, drug squad. Like, what? He so went, who are you? And I went, I'm Gary McDonald's, my brother's name. And uh, I've I've ended up saying saying uh, I says what are you doing here? I says well I'm just in here looking for work. I says I went to school with the boy and all that. Blah 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 blah. He's put me up. Blah blah blah. blah. And they went. Have you ever been in trouble, Gary? And I went. I got eight years for slashing the guy's throat. So they says oh I typical fucking gorbals. That's what they all hang down there. Aye. Everybody's all chim men for mm -hmm. the gorbals and that. So. I gave his date a buff and all that. And uh, they were more interested in him because this boy, I think, he was dealing drugs down there. So while you were in his house, his doors went in? His doors went for in. For drugs? For, for eight in the morning. <laughs> he, he he was under observation getting fucking thing with you and meeting these, Tur these Turks in the West End and all that. But I didn't know this and he didn't know his... He says his house had never been fucking turned to her before or nothing. So I heard them outside. I'm in the room, I heard them outside the room. Oh, no, they went, didn't you, him? And, I, and I, they were like, what's his name? And he played it right. He went, I'm no fucking telling you his name. Kicking in my fucking door and all that. So I'd say it's Gary McDonald's, my brother's name. And uh, that, that, that's, it worked out fine because if he just says a name, mm -hmm. you're fucked. I'm fucked. So he played it right. He just says, no, get to fuck and all that. So they took him away, James, and they were like, I mean, they come into me and they were like, ah. they says, uh, look, we've just decided. They says, just going to let you go, blah, 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 blah. And uh, I'll be like, thank fuck I never stole that on cuff on me. Aye. So he's went away. I went down the stair and his wife's there. She's seven months pregnant. And it's the first time I'd met her. And I says to her, I went, I says, for fuck's sake. I says, as long as you've been here. She says, we've just been here 18 months, no been to pause. I says, the night, this has happened, the robbery and all the rest of it. So I says to her, I says, look, I says, how'd you get to Le Elephant Castle? She says, I'll show you. And she went like, she says, there's £100, which was good, I say. And she took me to the one of the stations. So I got off at the Elephant Castle. It's a big roundabout, and I always remember. It was in the jail years later, and this boy, uh, there was a pub, Charlie Chaplin, who used to say, hi, Charlie Chaplin. And I says, hi, how'd you get there? And I was telling him. So I met this this guy there, one of the relatives, for my brother's Mrs. side. They took me up with these high flats at Elephant Castle and my missus was there. And the guy says, look, you want to stay here for a week? I says, no, I says, I need to get up the road. I've got unfinished business. Meaning, I've got enemies. I'm going to fucking take them out. So... Is that because you knew you were going to get a heavy sentence? Aye, aye. And just then I was just fucking nuts in it fair, you know what I mean? I had a lot of trouble, you know what I'd been done with a lot of shootings and all that and different things, you know what I mean? Been on remand in Berlin and that for it. Unfortunately, I got away with it. It was just the wee ones I was getting done with. Mm. And uh, a couple of robbery things came up, but nothing came with them. But uh, so, getting up on that train journey with me, the missus, and the, the boy, he was only two at the time. It was one of the saddest fucking journeys getting up there because I knew I was nicked because eventually got me see when I wrote the caravan one day. DNA. My prints were there. So the goat is for that and, and other things. So, I got off at Motherwell again, met a couple of pals, took me back to house in Hamilton, they gave me that, gave us a, a revolver with six dumb dumb bullets for maximum impact. And for five weeks I was running about the town and I was going to shoot cunts. Uh, but it's the truth, I was just going to fuss all them. I'd have just shot them in the street. But unfortunately that never happened. So five weeks after that, I hadn't saw the missus and uh, the police done a raid in my mass house and uh, this is May 91 and uh, 
they were kidding on it was a, a drugs offence for Alan. But what they done is the thing when they bugged the phone, and I was on the phone to Sheila. She'd moved from Bishop Briggs and into my master's stay. So this was still in Bishop Briggs, and uh, but she just moved in there to stay. And I'd phoned, and I says, "Right, I'll meet you." So we arranged to meet at the Po San Chinese restaurant. So I went down there first. It was a Tuesday. I always remember it was a Tuesday night. And uh, I've got the gun in my pocket and all that. I was sitting there and she came in. The first thing I says to her, I says, have you been folied? She went, don't be silly. I went, I didn't need bother. Two minutes later, a couple came walking in, sat at the next table. I went, undercover coppers. She went, oh, there you're starting all this paranoia again. You start this, I'm going to leave. I went, what the fuck did you expect me to do? I'm fucking on the run. I'm going to get about 20 fucking year. I just knew these two were coppers, right? But there was six guys sitting there, James, right? And they were going, oh, well done, your driving licence and all that. They were six coppers, I know. But I must I must give again, praise to the police that night. Instead of just lifting me, they left me there for three hours. So I went like that. If I got the back door, got the front door, I says, I know they're out there. I just knew. So they left us for three hours. I got told Mick Keeley was coming in. And... Uh, I just fucking started drinking three quarters dinner the last supper, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and at 11 o'clock, you could see all these people coming in for takeaways at this post and going out for a Tuesday mm -hmm. night. It was busy, but it was all the, it was called the, the Scottish Crime Squad mm -hmm. then. It's a serious crime squad now. But uh, Scottish Crime Squad, they were made up with police officers from Aberdeen and Dundee and all that came down. And uh, it was all them coming in to have a look. So they made a move and uh, Sheila's were like, look at all these guys and that coming into this restaurant. And I've turned around. Some fucking 15 people are rushing in. Mm -hmm. They have put my one in my pocket to get the gun. I didn't even know who they were. See the couple, the lovely couple, I called them. They two were the first guns that jumped right into Opie's. Know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And fucking uh, the six guys that bring me, they've ran here. They've got her doing, they've got me. The other people that came in, there must have been about 20 of them. They had me up in the air and I'm going blue. I'm going, for fuck's sake. I said, there's no need for this. And my name's gone. He's got a gun. Took the gun. I've thing me down. I've took the bullets. And I'm going blue. The wee Chinese guy thing me. If it wasn't so serious, it would, it would be laughable, but it is now. He came running there in the way like that ah, while I'm up there and he's going, who's paying this bill? <laughs> and at this, the, at this the Scottish Crime Squad, they kind of relax my grip. Uh -huh. Nudges me like that. Boop, boop, boop. So it was one of the momentous moments in my criminal career, and one of the saddest. <laughs> Me putting sick of the Scottish crime <laughs> squads, uh, and the thing me, the saddest took away in handcuffs. Are you glad now, but that you never killed anybody? Aye, without a doubt. Aye, without a doubt. Without and a then doubt. when you went to court, so what? What happened then is uh, I got took down to London Road Police Station. They were like to me. They says in. They says we were on a thing we a mission to. We, we, were, we were looking for you, you know what I mean? It says, uh, it says we were just to arrest you and hand you down to England. It says, now you've been done with this gun, you're going to Berlin. And I went, oh, for fuck's sake. I said, I'd always been in trouble not in there, James. I'd been in there in 84, 85, and uh, I'd been done with assaulting uh, prison officers and I'd done one of the worst doings in my life. It was called the Ham Wars. This sat in, in 80, 84, 85, in Berlin, your dining halls, there's no dining halls now, you just eat your, your dinners and your meals in your, your cell. But they had dining halls and they had teapots and all that. So this Saturday, used to always get banged up at five o'clock, Saturday, Sunday, Berlin. And uh, the the ham was half, this ham was half raw. And everybody went, we want a replacement. The school says, you can fuck all. And everybody whispered about, right, we're not going back to the hall. Uh, so next minute, they came right out to my table because there was a boy sitting next to me. He was doing for Peter Reid for visits. And uh, they went like right, this other boy, Ted Cuddy. They went, right, move. And he says, Ted, don't move. Ted was doing four years. If I was only doing 12 months. And uh, the next minute, they've grabbed him. I've just ju jumped up, up one of them with a teapot. And my other pal sort of on one of them with a chair and the whole dining hall just, everybody ran to the front, ran to the back, just thrown chairs and all that. Well, you mean my pal are starting hunting these cunts with chairs and all that? Same. The prison officers. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there was a prison governor called Slasher Gallagher. Johnny, Boy Johnny mentioned him, right? And this Slasher Gallagher was, he was mental. 
the, uh, the prison officers were fear to him. Uh, the prisoners, he took no shit. He slashed a guy and all that. Yeah, that's right? how he slashed right? Johnny sees all that. And uh, so the screws never done that, and we're going back to the hall, and they were going like that, McDonald and thing with this other guy, and told him, you know, I thought, like, fuck's sake. So I was dubbed up with this guy. I'm only doing 12 months. I've got a couple of months to go. There was guys doing lifers and all the rest of it, and they, 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 they never... They, they never went ahead, you know, he says we were going to go ahead. They just, we, we just done it. And uh, so I was in the third flat and with this boy, he's going like, oh, says, you're, you're going to get some doing. So they looked in the whole prison at five and they all came out and uh, I could hear them all. And my door opened and I went, right, get out to the other guy and fucking they shut the door and I've got a blade and I went, fuck it. Because you can get wee blades and fucking put them on the toothbrushes. I always used to do that in there, right? And fucking uh, I had a blade and I was stunning on the, this bed. I said, come in here, I'm going to slash one of them because I knew I was going to get it doing. Or slash a garlic. I came in, he used to always have this drill bit hat, hat and a long coat. He looked a menacing figure, you know what I mean? He went, get on. <laughs> and I went, fuck it, it's not worth it to slash somebody for mm -hmm. what, two months to go. So they just grabbed me, and for the third landing to the second, to the first, to the bottom, there was a gauntlet, a prison officers, and they were all instructed not to hit me with their bottom, just to punch and kick. I was like, punching the ball up in what the was face. And this was for this uh, incident in the dining hall, uh -huh. where we took the, the prison writing. officers' eye for writing. Mm -hmm. So I get to a line to fucking this uh, thing with the Wendy Hoose wasn't there at the time. This was a segregation unit. You used to get to it, I think it was E Hall, put in the boat and flat. And uh, I, I, I was some face, man. I was some neck. I was luckily none of my bones were broken. My face was like the elephant, man. Doctor came in as usual. Oh, he fell down the stairs. So the police came and they charged me with two assaults. And uh, my mum was to come up a couple of days later because I was that bad and they kept me away from all the prisoners. And uh, they'd take me out and exercise when nobody was about. And uh, I was waiting for a visit from my ma, and they went and says to my ma, the dirty cunts, uh, I he doesn't like the visit because the state I was in. So, I did the screws up. ever get done, Ian, for batting people back in the day? Or did they ever get no, 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 really, no, really. That's fucking it, bad, that no, one. It was, it was, but that, 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 I've had a couple of doings in Berlin, right? That, that was the worst one, and uh, I ended up getting six months for that. But going back to the Chinese restaurant instant, I'm mm -hmm. doing the London Road, says you're going to Glasgow Sheriff for the gun. Uh, you're not going to Torquay. So I went, fuck. So I'm in the Berlin reception at four. And they took me out of the hall for five. They get dubbed up for five to six. And I'm in C Hall. And uh, I'm in the cell with cell. I'm walking up and doing I'm going, fucking hell. I says, I'm going to get fucking 15 years for this bank. Five years for the gun. I'm going to lose my fucking messes. Mm -hmm. The fuck shit. Yeah. Seem you're in that house. time. Seem you're in it that time. Annoying. Aye. Do you have regret as well? Because when you do that, the life of crime for any young boys watching, it has a ripple effect, doesn't it? Yeah. Aye. It's not just you. And we've, like I say, growing up, we think it's cool not involved in the bad shit, but it has a ripple effect on one more's own more families, own everybody else. The families else. suffer as well, James. See, see, like, see, you're saying there, a good point there. Mm -hmm. See, the families, see, like, see, your sister, your ma, your mm -hmm. brothers and all that, especially your wife or your ma, they're Aye. doing the sentence with you. I know. So they're, and mm -hmm. it's no fair for a lassie to wait for 10 years. My missus waited five years, right? But wait and I'll tell you what happened when we went into Berlin after the mm -hmm. restaurant. They'd just been fucking strangled and all that in the restaurant. So go to Berlin. They took me out of the, the hall, sea hall. I'm walking up and down to six, and I says to myself, Well, I'll get you got it was piss pots at the time. There's no toilets, no nothing like that. You know what I mean? You like a toilet with your piss pot, you just a radio. So I says, I'll go and see a couple of the troops and all that. But I was not, I was not down there, you know what I mean? I went, I've only done 18 months. I'm going to be in here for a good while, you know what I mean? So the door opened, and the hall was all eerily silent. And uh, and I went to get the door, and these two screws went, no, you get in strip search. And I went, strip search? I says, I've not even been in long enough to plank nothing. So, <laughs> so, so they went like that, get your shirt off, I've got the jail gear on. I'm taking the shirt off, and I'm going, this is no right, you know what I mean? And the two of them were looking at us, and I could see them as if to say, who's going to punch them first? Mm -hmm. So I got my, my shirt, and it was trapped, 
And one of them went to hookahs. So I've fucking steamed into them. Another six of them ran in. They all go, it was, doing, it, was, it, was all, it was all planned and it was all controlled. They got me down on my knees, had my hair back. And they all were like, you know what this is for, don't you? Payback. For that riot? For that riot and because of the Berlini riot, my pals had been up on the roof and I'd been doing it to Berlini. Uh, when the riot was going on, my pals were up on the roof at the time, me and the Barry. Is that the protest? Albert Moffat. And uh, uh, my pal Samuel Ralston caused it. It was one of the worst riots that had ever happened. They were up there five days and they took hostages and all that. And uh, they were up there banging fucking shields and all that and wearing all the uniforms. And right. So I decided to get down one day, I think it was January 86, the riot happened. And I, I'd, I'd been in the pub the night before it. And I went back here and I had this big white sheet. I put polish on it and I went, Slasher gallery, a killer is an animal. I says, I should know I'm a victim. And I went to Berlin the next day, first day of the riot. And it was all the telly, you know. And I pulled it up and I've tricking all the reporters around. Oh, I says, I've been a victim. I says, I says, this has been caused because of the, the system in there. It, it, they're, just, they're just getting fucked right about and people are getting dunes and all the rest of it. You know what I mean? So. That that that's what happened then. But in Berlin then, and looking back to ninety one, they, they booted fuck out of me in that cell. So they they do these grips, they do these grips on you, these controlled and restraint. Mm -hmm. They just learned to bring them in the early eighties. To tell you the truth, James, see if you get a doing. It wasn't too bad, but see these grips, eh, and the prison will tell you. There's only supposed to be one screw. They, they pull you two of them do it, right? And it's fucking sore, and they try and get you to scream mm. so everybody can hear, oh, listen to him screaming. So, when you come to Postal Park, and I'll never forget this, and I put it in the book, always be a uh, thing me for him, for what he done. Not one prisoner out of 300 says anything, you know what I mean? They heard me getting took down, fucking thing me, and you know, the screws shout, getting back to fuck. The door went, leave him alone! Right? So, they took me down to this cell, and they put me in, they turkeyed me up. And he threw all my clothes off, put me into a padded cell, and there was a, just a fucking paddy thing I was to put on. I says, I'm no fucking wearing that. And I was sitting there just all covered in bruises. So I heard them get up to this other door, and they went into this guy. And this guy sitting at his bump bed, having a fag, and they went to the guy, Oh, are you the fucking hard man that banged the door? Eh? Now, I don't know what you're talking about. Go to him. Gave him a treatment. So the next morning, eh, this screw came in. And he went like that. Ah, it was a screw for Berlini Andy Moore. He used to come from Proven Mill. And he went, how are you? I says, how am I? You know how I'm fucking a... He says, no, listen. He says, yeah, come on along for a shower. I says, I'm not wearing that gown. He says, no, I've got your stuff. I'm lying in the shower. And the uh, white ones are soap there. I went, I went, get used to this in the shower. And I'm doing that. And he's gone, I know what's happened and all that. And he says, look, I've got bad news for you. I says, look, you can't get any more bad news from me. I says, I've got a bank, a gun, fucking everything you got for. And, I, and I'm fucking feeling sorry. I says, I've lost my way. Mm -hmm. the, the fucking the house, everything, the pub. And, uh, and he went, no, he says, and, uh, and the soap came off by that quick. I says, and what bad news is that? He says, well, see my shift. You're going to come into you at lunchtime. You used to get banged up for 12 to 1 and you're going to bat your cunt in an hour. So I went, who the fuck the fuck do you think he's at? I says, a, a man here for recreational purposes. He just to get part about my fucking cricket. Eh, but and he went, I'm just letting you know. He says, but I'm taking the part of it. And he says to us, he says, when you see the governor this morning, tell him you want to go, by this time the Wendy House was in, 91, tell him you want to go to the Wendy House segregation. And I says, what do I want to say that for? He says, well, it'll save you getting a fucking down. I says, wait a minute, what my own report for? He says, oh, they met Bartlett you last night, says that you try to attack them first. I went, I need bother. So I ended up, I went to this Wendy house. My missus came up to see my brother, they saw the bruises. And uh, this is what happened to you. I says, oh, I got strangled in the Chinese restaurant, battered in Berlin. I says, I'm going to slash one of these cunts. And she went, oh, don't do that. It was her first time ever coming to a prison. And Gary's like, oh, I fucking did. <laughs> right? But I wasn't going to fuck. I says, I'm not doing that to me for nothing, but I would have, I would have got every bone in my fucking bo uh, body broken if I did date. Did they ever kill anybody, the screws? Eh? Did they ever kill anybody? Well, down in England and all that, there's been rumours that they've took them into segregation blocks and mm. they've hung them up and all that. 
Have they? And one with scrubs there and made all that suicide. You know what I mean? And I think it happened that's in Birmingham that's as well. Right extreme man after that. Yeah, I never knew it was that bad after No, that. see see back in the, the when I was in uh -huh. uh, in the eighties and that, it was really bad, you know what I mean? Mm. The screws the screws the screws were animals. So right? did you when you up for the gun in Glasgow, what did you get? Well what happened is uh, I was in uh, the Wendy house for the five weeks and I'd says so Sheila had says to me at the visit, uh, it was only a day, I'm going to do all the bruises and all that, and it, she says, please go in all day now, and she says, get me in the wee way and look after you for 10 years. So I went, right, okay, then I'll make a promise, I'll no day now, I'll keep my mouth shut. So I get back to this Wendy house, and I walked up and did my cell, and I went, did she just say I was going to be in for fucking 10 years there? So it was starting to dawn on me, mm -hmm. and uh, then they started playing tricks on me. And I've got a chapter in the book that's called The Chewing Gum Gang. This mob for Cumbernauds. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I called them. I called them. I, I, I have a jail tear in my head. It was a jail tear, chewing gum, swag in the boot, foot of the deep. So they came into me one day and they were like, I was an escape risk. You used to put your stuff out at quarter past four on a chair. You know what I mean? No, your clothes, you'd wear pyjamas. Mm -hmm. So they come in at half three one day and they were like, get your stuff out. I went, fuck off. I says, see what's all that wall? They went, aye. And one of them went, aye, your social club, we've been drinking tonight and you won't. I went, ah, 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 funny. I says, no, I says, there's parky door there. There's wee boys at five and six. I wait to see Celtic playing. I says, and you're telling me to put my pyjamas on at half three? Fuck off. So they all went away laughing. Ah. So they were trying to noise me up and me so they could give me another good, good doing, but I'd made this promise. So, uh, what happened was another week after that, I told Jane my clays went out each night for three, for three days. James, I know it's when I pulled my chair in, my trousers and jumper, the, the prison issue stuff, it was wet. So, I says, Well, wait a minute, they've been peeing on the shower, <laughs> the shower's 60 meters along there. I, I says, There's no hole in the fucking roof. I says, I know who that is. <laughs> so I says, right, no having it. I'm not having this. So they came to the door and I went like that. I says, listen. I says, eh, I says, last three mornings I've been bringing my stuff in, it's been wet. And they says, ah, it must be the cats. Seen Berlini, they had cats. It went, oh, about Berlini, it was these gates, could have come into the windows. Mm -hmm. I know what I says. And I went to the door and I went, no. Know these cats use fucking dogs and mm -hmm. slam the door. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll be giggling again, you know what I mean? Pushing on your stuff. Aye, uh, so I went to Edinburgh High Court after that, after five weeks, and I get uh, two and a half years for the gun. She was lucky, you know what I mean? And I came back and they took me out the Wendy house and uh, I get put into B Hall and I get shouted down after a day. And uh, this principal officer, Pew, and another screw, they says, We heard that you're going to not fuck out of one of your officers in a revenge attack. I don't know, somebody told them that, but I don't know who. They were like that. Ah. I says, nah, I know me. And this, this PO, right bastard, they were lying to me. He says, I'll tell you one thing. He says, see if any of my fucking officers get hurt. He says, you be going to that fucking Royal Infirmary and every bone in your fucking body will be broke. And he meant it. Mm -hmm. So I had to keep my mouth shut five weeks and I got took down to England for an ID parade for this bank. Came back up, put me into Dartmoor for a couple of days, came back up. Then in September 91, straight down to England, and uh, they took me to Edinburgh, and there was six police for Devon and Cornwall Police, we're all gunned up and all that, and they put me in a motor, 100 mile an hour, all the way down to fucking Fingway, uh, Torquay, but they stopped at Plymouth for a break, there was two, two cars of them, and I got the ID, and that, then they took me to Fingway, Bristol, and one of my co accused was in there, Michael Caro. And I was in there for the Friday to the Monday. And I was going to court and Mick says, oh, wait, see when you go to court on Monday. I says, what do you mean? He says, there's going to be a range, two Range Rovers, motorcycles, a helicopter. I says, what, for a wee guy, for me, for Springburn? He says, wait, you see this. So I thought I was coming back here. Monday morning, they're out. Sure enough, two Range Rovers, machine guns, fucking helicopter, motorcycle outriders, all the way to Torquay, marksmen in the roof. I'm like, it's a bit fucking overkill for me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we came out of there, I'd been charged and all that, I'd been getting my depositions, this was your, your charging and all that. 
so I thought I was going back to Bristol. So they took me back to they took me to this place, and I didn't know any of the jails in there really, except for freaking Walton and Risley where I'd been in when I was that boy. And uh, they took me a top security prison called Long Latin. And uh, it's 30 miles from Birmingham, near Evesham, Worcestershire. And I uh, go to reception. And uh, I says to the security, where are you? told me not. I says, I don't want to be here. He went, oh, I, you will want to be here. He says, this is a cushy neck. You know what I mean? And uh, he says, then he says, you're going to the gangster wing. And uh, I thought about that in the book. That's... Gangster, and I went to this wing, and it was all top guys for London, and and it was it turned it turned out a good place, but I, I shouldn't have been there, then two and a half year, but they thought my coaches was going to try and break me out, so they took me a thing this long Latin, and uh, I was in there, and everybody got rounded up. There's other people still in the run, Tam Carrigan and the uh, Rab Parker. See, they two boys I told you it left. Right, they, they went up to Norfolk where they used to, Tam used to stay. And uh, they rented a farmhouse. They, done, they, they broke into a gun shop. They reversed a jeep into it. And they stole magnums and uh, pump action shotguns. And they had them hidden underneath the farmhouse. And they went and done three banks and threw flare guns. So they get 18 years, 17 years for that. For three banks? For three banks Much and they uh, thing, me. I think they got about 150 grand or something. Not For three banks? Yeah, I... Fucking no worth it, is that? Nah, no, this was a way back. And, uh, so, but they still charged them with the bank at Torquay. So... The conspiracy? Aye, uh, so we, we all went to trial. I was in for May, June, June 91. And the uh, first trial came up in Bristol. October 82. So we waited, what? We waited, it was a good while, you know what I mean? Well over a year, 16 months or something. So we all went to court at Bristol and it was a carry on there. The sixes were all there together and we were running amok. They couldn't deal with us. The police, the prison officer says they couldn't, they, they couldn't think they <laughs> work, work us out. Because we, we were just fucking running amok. No, I went to court one day and I came back and he says, your own report, look for Oh, you, you were fucking shouting abuse at the screws, trying to spit on them and all that. They were trying to mess us a bit. So we ended up three juries. It'd take a long time. We ended up three juries, kept getting put back. Did you go offered a deal or anything? No. No the deal? No, there was no deal. They, they, they just had this and that was it. going to get you. Aye, so Bristol, we were trying to get a gun smuggled into court. And uh, we, we'd found a, a thing, made, a, a bit we could get it in, a weak link in the court, it was in an old court in Bristol, and uh, it, it, the plan was in motion. Then we went to court the next day, and the next one it was fucking all these security barriers and blah, 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 blah. And uh, there was all these meetings with the lawyers and the QCs and judges, and they wouldn't have seen that in us. And what one of the QCs, out of the six, he was, I think we representative, he was to get into chambers with the procurators, uh, the QC procurators and the judge to be told what, what, what was going on. Then he came out under an oath that he wasn't to reveal to the five other thing me, the QCs or anybody what gets sees in that room. But what gets sees in that room was that we had a plan in motion to get a gun in and we were going to effect an escape, batter all the prison officers before we left and just hijack motors in Bristol and get off. And that was the truth. But the gun hadn't been there yet. Know what I mean? How did they know? Somebody in Glasgow grassed us. Again? Aye, somebody in Glasgow grassed us that fucking we were going to escape. You know what I mean? And they, they told even in the Scottish Crime Squad up here, told even Somerset Police. I think I had a bit of paper I showed you. It says in the, eventually we got these documents. It says if this gun was, would have been in the hands of the defendants and uh, they would have affected an escape, everybody's life would have been in danger. And he says if they find out who the person was responsible for, for, for grassness, they would be dead within a week. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the judge went like that, look, I'm having name area this. And fucking says, I'm abandoning this trial, and he's going to the Old Bailey. That is heavy stuff. So this but... was 16 months we'd already been in. So went back to Bristol, and the screws were like that. Fuck's it, what's up to you? We're like that. That's the trial thing. We hated us in there. 
So the next day we were supposed to have a meeting and all of that, and uh, they wouldn't have it, and three screws get battered, one got a fractured tip, uh, another one got his arm broke, another, another one took in, I don't know what happened to him, there was three or four screws injured, and uh, we all get transferred out to different prisons. Then they had a, a trial in 19... 1993, we had to wait another, when was that, October 92, we had to wait another two, to wait another 10 months for another trial, and it was at the Old Bailey. So they all took us down to Belmarsh and we got warned, we got to into the security unit inside Belmarsh, a prison within a prison. The governor warned us, he says, any many of your carry-ons, what you have done at Bristol and all that, this is a, uh, you've been kept here in the trial, you've been done your absence and you'll just get split about different jails. And uh, so we went to court. That trial lasted five weeks and uh, the jury went out for two days. We went, oh, fuck, we we're getting out of it. And get it again, I mean, but the jury only went out to get to go to a fancy hotel and get a good dinner, know what mm -hmm. I mean? And they come in, guilty, guilty, guilty. And they sentenced me to 16 years for the hope robbery. Conspiracy to rob six months for the escape for the caravan, and they gave uh, the other three boys 16 years, uh, boy 18 years, and Mick, uh, Mick Keeley, he got 19 years, added on to 12. She so was then 31 years, but the judge says, I don't know if I can be within my right to give you this consecutive. So I came out with Mick handcuffed and I says, Fuck, you're doing longer than the train robbers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They so, get away with their money and all that. Aye, uh, so we were all back in Belmarsh High Security the next day, and me and Mick were walking about the exercise yard going, When the fuck's this black tunnel going to end? Know what I mean? Well, did you think when you go up when it says, Right, bang, guilty, 18 years, Ian McDonald? How did you feel? <sighs> Demoralised. I thought I was going to get 10 years or something. And I'm not ashamed to say to this. I was in Belmarsh that night. I think I shed a few tears, know what mm. I mean? I think it was that loud they could all hear me up in Glasgow yeah, Green yeah. for London. But you think that's when you realise. What the fuck have I done with my life? Because well, so many questions no, you ask yourself. Aye, but see, 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 at the time, James, I, I couldn't be a, a hypocrite. Because uh, I, I played for high stakes and we lost. Mm -hmm. What if we would have got that money? Mm -hmm. But I was saying to myself, inwardly, I was saying to myself, how the fuck am I going to get through this? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the missus says she would stick by for five years. So we all get dispersed to different jails and all of that. I went to a jail full sitting, you know what I mean? And uh, one of the other boys went there as well. I was in there for three years. And I met Ronnie O'Sullivan in there. He came. And, uh, That's a snooker player. Ah, snooker player star. star. And he came and everybody was all talking to him. And we were just sitting and we were and he came up, chapped the door and he says, heard you of the Scottish boys. And me and my pal went, That's right. And he went, Mama, I'm Scottish. And I kind of went, I ain't it. And he went, But do you not believe us? <laughs> and he went, Can't I? And he started us. And I went, Fuck, let me just tell the truth. So he went like, he says, look, he says, after the five and six dub up, he says, I'll come up and I'll put you on the phone to my ma. And, uh, and he walked out the door and they went, and by the way, she's got a better accent than used to. And she's stayed in Hackney for 50 years. And I says, I bollocks. <laughs> so he did come up and he, he was on the phone to his wee mm. man and he shouted me here. They went, here's Ian, why I talk to you, boy from Glasgow. And she went, uh, I went like, how you doing, Mr. Sam? She went, how you doing, son? Mm -hmm. And I said, what's better than me? Mm -hmm. And Brody stood like that, smiling her, you know what I mean? So we became great pals, you know what I mean? And some there. story, because his old mum was in for murder. Aye, aye, aye. And me, his boy used to come and, his boy was only 16 used to come at the time. He used to come up and when Ronnie had just got the jail in 92, he'd won the UK Open at 16. And he came up to the jail, Ronnie. He used to take uh, young Ronnie run all the, the, the clubs when he was 10, he was beating people at 21, so he kind of a thing with his career, you know what I mean? And mm. he missed out on it. And, uh, Again, that's the life, of, that's the, the violence, the crime, and you miss out on these things that... But Ron, 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 Ronnie, Ronnie, was, Ronnie was stitched up, he was in a, a private members club, and uh, these, these two black guys were cheeky a woman, and he just went there and says, look, says, leave it out with him, says, who the fuck are you talking to? And, Bang and two of them were stabbed. One died, and uh, Ronnie Ronnie was only thirty-seven. He was a good businessman. He was a right to write his stories. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
he stayed in Hackney, then he, I used to say to him, you, you moved to, stayed in Essex, mm -hmm. and I used to slag him, so you stayed in the Birds of a Feather. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but his boy, he done fantastic, you know what I mean? Was he crazy right and doing there that Well, time? Charlie Cray, he ended up, a couple of years later, I was in another place called uh, Long Latin, and Charlie Cray got 12 years, and he ended up next door to me. And the guy, I started talking away to him and all that, he was 72 and he got 12 years, you could see he, was, he wasn't going to do that. He was too old and that. And uh, I get speaking to him. And I says to him, I says, because when I was younger, I used to hear the stories that Arthur Thompson was connected to the craze. So I says to Charlie Cray, was sitting to him a cup of tea and that. And I says to him, I says, I says, uh, I says, I says, Arthur Thompson, I says, did you know him? He says, oh, I says, me and the twins knew him well. He says, he'd come down to do a bit of work for the twins and that. He says, and they would come up to Glasgow and that. And he says to me, he says, by the way, he says, you'll be meeting Reg. Reg was on the, he, he was at the end of his sentence, but by this time he was a poor old guy. The, home secretary, the home secretary was releasing him because he had about four weeks to, to live. Mm -hmm. So the jail was buzzing, so you know, fuck Reggie Cray's coming to the jail, you know what I mean? This is a top security act, this Franklin, uh, I say Long Latin and Eddie Richardson. He was one of the main rich, he was, he was a pal of mine's in there. He was lying there, the landing. So Reggie Cray came and uh, Charlie brought him into my cell, introduced me and I shook his on and that. He says, glad to meet you and all that. And he says, yes, we met after and all that. But he never went into details what they'd done in that. And uh, and I says to him, I says, I says to Reggie Cray, I says, me and you have got something in common. And he looked at me off and he went, and what's that? I says, no, I've read a few of your books. I says, you were a mammy's boy. I says, so am I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he laughed at that. He quite liked that. Uh -huh. And he says, aye, he says, uh, he says, But they aye. were as well, weren't they? Aye, they, they were, were they mammy's were boy. And he more. says to me, he says, aye, he says, uh, all, all my friends, he's, we were always pals and that. He says, he used to come round his mask, I think her name was Violet. He says, he'd all come up the stairs and she'd serve tea and all that. Mm -hmm. and what were they treated like in the jail? Were they royalty? <sighs> aye, they were... <laughs> Every, everybody thought it was a bit of a liberty that... They were doing 30 years uh, recommendation where, where it was two fellow crooks they'd killed. Mm -hmm. They were getting made an example because before they go to the jail, they, 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 were, they were running clubs. They, they, and they, 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 they knew all the celebrities. They, mm -hmm. they were becoming two celebrities themselves. Mm -hmm. So, so thing, they, they made an example. How did you two. handle your sentence then when you go to How it? did I handle Aye. it? To tell the truth, the first five years I struggled, so I did. And uh, I know a lot of people like that struggled five years. I said, well, how would they like to do five years? We went for 18 months. I just couldn't, uh, I just couldn't handle it, James. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what the big problem was, I kept thinking they'd been outside and boys after you say, this is your life, you know what I mean? You've just got to concentrate on here. But I always keep thinking they're Friday, Saturday night, your pals are out dancing and Drinking at bugs, clubs right. and blah, 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 blah. So my man, my sister came up to see me after <laughs> five and a half year, and I says, "Never visit room." That's me settled. My man says, "Fucking time, I know." <laughs> know what I mean? Five and a half so I says, year. "I just got up in the morning now." I says, uh, "I go to work, uh, go to gym." I says, "We have wee parties and all mm -hmm. that," and you yeah, had had some good some had some good times in there. Better out here, mm -hmm. you were allowed cooking facilities in there. You could. It was different for here. You had cookers and freezers and all that. And you, at the canteen, you could buy herbs, spices, mm -hmm. uh, onions and all that, uh, vegetables. You could even buy steak, mince, all that. So there was great cooks there. And uh, you were allowed a knife for, for the office. You could get into the office. So you could uh, get a knife and you could cut chicken and all that. Mm -hmm. And you had the Jamaican yardies and all that. There They were all making jerk chicken and all that. So I, I I learned to cook, mm -hmm. and uh, a boy, a good pal of mine, he's dead now, God bless him, he's a good guy, a boy from South London, Desi Cunningham. It was reputedly, a uh, thing made, reported that he'd stabbed Charlie Bronson. He took me under his wing, and uh, he learned me to cook and all that for scratch, and I was getting right into it, and I was writing wee notes, and so I started making dinners and all that, mm -hmm. and I was in the food boat with Ronnie Sullivan, Eddie Richardson then, my other co accused, know what I mean? Do you ever see me come out? Because you came a bit of a celebrity yourself, but 
Didn't you? You were because you started the documentaries, then you started writing the book because you were in papers all the time. And uh, I, as when much I first as came out, when I first came out, James, my man, I eventually done nine and a half years in England, mm -hmm. and I got up to shots and I got after ten ten years, five months, five days, uh, five five minutes mm -hmm. <laughs> and five seconds. Mm -hmm. I never went to any open prisons. They says I was in rehabilitation material, whatever that meant. So I only knew best crime. But uh, when I got out, I had a wee surprise. My ma came up in a big limo with all my family and all that. And, uh, and I was stood in the car park with my suit and that on. And uh, the reason I says my suit, when I get to jail 91, I says if I quit wearing the stuff I had on, I'd, I'd have been looking like somebody <laughs> I'd have been looking like somebody <laughs> from Fingway, Shoe Waddy Waddy. So my ma goes, I suit for slaters and all that. And I'm stood in the, the car park, bought a champagne, the Daily Record were there. There was a big story the next day, 10. 10 year stretch and he uh, says I gave the, fig, the, the vicar to this governor this governor walked by and went uh, good luck in your freedom I says up yours you know what I mean mm -hmm. and uh, so I got out on the Thursday and uh, next day it was in the paper and my wee ma was like that it was a photo me and my ma this limo and that just out and she says uh, oh I'll not be able to get my bingo on Saturday everybody I says ma be proud I'm not been in for rape or right. I says try to steal fucking some money you know what I mean mm -hmm. And uh, so I go out, and uh, within two days I was in Victoria's, and for then I more or less took care of Victoria's. Uh, I got invited up one night after about a week, and I just took it as my God-given right to to go to it to, to go up for the after hours. And I'd be sitting to seven eight in the morning and all that, but nobody was saying that, and then I was inviting everybody up, and uh, I remember one night DJ Vance used to be on in a. A Sunday, Sunday night. night. So we all used to go on a Sunday night and all that. These boys from Alton and Poso came up and they went, you know, my man, Dan, they went, a couple of them were like, says, can we stay after hours a night? Everybody was looking at me as if I owned it. You mm. know what I mean? I brought my dance floor with two bottles of buds. Mm -hmm. DJ Vance, he's playing <laughs> Superstar with all the fucking records. You <laughs> know what I mean? Do you think that was you living uh, your youth and all that? This was me just coming out and I, I says to myself, well, I'm not getting involved in crime. I'm taking a year off, but saying a year off, I feel bank robber saying, saying take mm -hmm. a few, but that's the way I felt. Because a couple of people says to me when I was out a couple of weeks, how do we know if we get back into crime? And Straight away. You know, a lot of people do in England. I says, no. I says, I want to enjoy myself. So I came out still as if I was 30. So in Victoria's, uh, James Mortimer owned it and all that. So I, I knew the Mortimer uh, thing, the, the daughters and that. So they weren't saying that. And, and, uh, and one night I was on the flare and two bottles of wood. I was taking Eckies by the fucking dozen, you know what I mean? <laughs> and at 40 years of age, I was still going to the Archies at 50, you know what I mean? <laughs> still think I was a young boy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 what Welcome to Glasgow, Elliot. Uh, Elliot, big Elliot must be going lucky in hell if uh, I let myself in So, what happened? <laughs> in, in, in Victoria, I thought, I thought it was the only place, so can I used to see this big place in the sky in Socky Hill Street? And I was just rave, rave, rave. So, I used to go up there about three, four times a week and I'd keep people after hours. And uh, one night, I'm on the flare and I'm doing the usual fucking Budweiser or fucking the DJ Vance and all that. And fucking the bouncers came out about 10 to 3 and they went to Susie and says, uh, Lynn says, we leave no coming up the night at the piano bar. I says, are you going to take a fuck to yourself? I says, I've invited people up there. So we went, no, we're just letting you know and I went up and I've kicked the door and she came and I says, get to fuck. And I walked in with my pals and uh, we were like, who's all that? I says, that's a serious crime squad you're drinking with. And they've all looked at me like that and I went to the bar and the guy came out to me and they went, Ian, you know your Rangers, don't you? I went, aye, they went, have another look. I turned around, it was like Gordon Dale. He was the manager of <laughs> United. Aye, aye, aye. So they all got, they were all thinking, who the fuck does he think he is mm -hmm. and all that. So they all got up and left and that. And uh, this continued for about seven, eight months, me going to Vicky's and uh Virtually just fucking taking out of the place, you know what I mean? Nobody's seen that, and so I'm out and I'm just thinking. And at the same time, I was hearing, uh, I'm going to get done in, I'm coming out, and I'm going to do this. But I never stood on anybody's toes, you know what I mean? Get told Specky Boyd, you know, the security companies have wanted to do me and other people. But I just came out, just wanted a good time, you know what I mean? And uh, there was one instance I was 
only like three or four months when I was in Barcini in Renfield Street. I got a telephone call from my ma and uh, she says to his, look, see, I have been up here and all that. She says, I've been greeting and all that. This is, watch when you open your door and all that. She says, what are you on about? This is, tell Ian, you better come and see us. It's important. And my ma phoned us and I says to my pals in Barcini, I says, what had happened? And I phoned up at Bird Street. She says, you want to see me? And I went, aye. I says, look, I says, I'm going to fucking dance tonight. I says, I'm not coming up. They says, Ian, we know you are. I says, no, you don't. I says, I would do so. I says to my pals, look, I don't want my mag getting hassle at the door. I went up to Baird Street and I says to the taxi driver, give my ten, I think it was like four quid. I says, look, it's even only ten minutes, just drive away. And there was five CID there. And he says, Ian, he says, eh, what it is? He says, eh, I've got one of the Osmonds to danger your life. So I says, I says, I'm not causing any bother. I says, well, we've got good intelligence. So I says, that they went, I says, are you free to go? I says, I've got a taxi out there. So I walked out and worried and went like that. He says, Ian, he says, it's on the phone, you didn't know where you were. And another one went, eh, Barcini. And I went, fuck's sake, I didn't know. Then another one went like that, enjoy Victoria's tonight. And I'm walking away, then another one shouted, and don't be staying into seven in the morning. <laughs> so they knew everything about yeah, me, yeah. but I was not causing mm -hmm. trouble. But it came to a head, I got pulled with my social worker, who turned out a little bastard. He was only 32 <laughs> and I was 40, and he tried to run my life. And uh, he would say, right, you have to do this and do that. And so, and he was, he was a little cunt, and he turned out a little cunt, you know what I mean? And I can say that. I hope he's watching. Uh, and I hope you put this in the fucking programme, you know what I mean? I'll tell you his fucking name if you want, you know what I mean? But you might try and fucking sue us. It's fucking true. <laughs> so this wee cunt, James Ryan, he's trying try to be on ice at first and all that. The the social work office at the time in 2001, I got in, it was Gordon Street, now it's at Norfolk Street. So I'd go down and see him. So after a couple of months, I went like that to him. I had to tell him where I was, I was staying my man at, right? So I says, look, I want to rent a... A house up in uh, Bishop Briggs, with Hill Road, was I detached. I still had some money, you know what I mean? And pals were giving me money for being out. So I wanted to turn this house into a rave, right? For my Vickies. I was into my mm -hmm. rave then, right? You must have been fucking <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, brilliant, brilliant. I had a great time. It was one of the best years of my life. <laughs> and uh, thing we at me at 40. Because I was just, just, just fucking... Reliving your gift, you've just spent all sorts of I years in know, I was just, And everybody saying, come on, I says, I'm doing nothing, I'm enjoying this. So I says to this uh, thing with social worker and I was all happy and I says, I'll meet you up at this address and I'm freaking like a wee boy and I'm taking them through this fucking detached house, the double garage, barbecue, and it, the thing that attracted me, the fucking house, it's a big fucking living room size of uh, things. Elliot's. His name? Elliot's this fucking... <laughs> and I went, that can be the party after Vicky's. <laughs> know what I mean? That's, That's what I was thinking. That's space, Elliot, mate. You've got <laughs> parties in here. So, so, that, so, that, so this social worker turned out and I'm giving him out a guided tour and he went, I says, what do you think? He went, no. I says, what do you mean, no? He says, first of all, where are you going to get money? I says, look, I've got money. He says, I had a house for sale before I get in it and money's put by and I've got money, blah, 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 blah. Then he went, nah. He says, you're not having a better house than me. And I looked at him and I went, and I was not driving at the time. He says, what, I run down the road? I said, no, nah, I went, fuck all, run. <laughs> so the wee cunt fucking actually stitched me up and all. I'd, I'd went, I'd been out a year and I'd went to see my son. Remember I told you he'd moved to Spain? Aye. He'd moved to Belna uh, Medina. So they gave me permission to go and I'd asked a second time to go a few months later. And that wee cunt I didn't know he fucking wrote a letter to Strathclyde Police and says, I think Ian McDonald's going to f flight risk. And uh, Strathclyde Police had gathered an intelligence report and it was all fucking shite. says, I was going to do this and do that. And uh, it says, I was in Mortimer's. They knew about this. He says, I was in Victoria's and uh, I was threatening the owner to snort cocaine. I wasn't the threatening the owner. I just fucking done it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, and they had another one. I met a guy who came... I was going to get him done in and all of that. Uh, they heard us, over, overheard the speaking and uh, Joe Shields, my lawyer, came up to Shorts and he went like, he says, that allegation here, you he, he heard this guy, he, came, he says, I'm sure he was in Dane seven years. Guy was Gary Moore. 
He was doing seven years for Jimmy Boyle's boy at the time, you know what I mean? Since he was in Kilmarnock, I says, so he's come out of Kilmarnock jail at the bars and come up with Socky Hill Street and fucking spoke to me, then broke back in. And Joe says, look, you got out of this. And, uh, but it went to court and just before Vicky's, just before my demise and Vicky's, Morton was getting sick of it by this time. And, uh, Cause he'll try to run a business. He online, sold though. it. He sold it to a company called Vimac for Newcastle. And uh, I've turned up, I didn't know where I've turned up, and the guys are like that. Says he, and he says, We know who you are. And he says, We need after hours, we need to take thing we in, blah, 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 blah. So I'd done a bit of research showing them, you know what I mean? Because I'd heard about this, we're taking it out, and this guy. From Newcastle, you know? Aye, Newcastle, and I says to this guy, I says, I that's not bothering me. I says, We could run anyway, you know what I mean? And he employed a new security company up, up front. You know, it was up front, it was a pose that was running at something. I up front, because... Uh, so it's no new bouncers and all that as well. And uh, so I says to one of these directors, I says, oh, by the way, I says, you've got the same date as Buff as Mama. He went, what do you mean? I says, fucking the 16th for the 12th. I says, but no, obviously, the fucking the year. They looked at me. And the following week, I was going to tell him his address, you know what I mean? Because it could... Cause he was, he was, he didn't want me in there, and he uh, went up the stairs and all that, and he changed all drinks and all that, and he came in and said, "Hey, buddy, I says you've changed fucking all these fancy drinks, fucking Bacardi breezers and different people like that, and and just so I was up the following week with a crowd of people, and they says to me five to three the bouncers, they says leave, and uh, me and my brother says, oh, fuck, we'll just not fuck out of them, you know what I mean? Just not fuck out about four of them." never done that no my other pals just stood so I get to jail for that and uh, that was one of the reasons I get recalled it was an intelligence report and it was proved at the London Parole Board that the intelligence report was false but they says you have breached your licence because you get done for a breach of the peace in Victoria's that's enough to do a recall that was enough it? and they gave me 30 days so I went back in for what a, was your recall for? it was for could you um, not, was it no an extra few years now? Was it just? Aye, I was in for an extra 14 months. Fuck's sake. I got out in November 2001 and I went back in in February 2003. And uh, I could have been kept in for five years, but the guy that came up for the parole board says, Is that what you're in for? For kind of breach of the peace in Victoria. But they could have kept you in for that. You're no, lucky. they could have kept me in. What's the longest you've stayed out for in between uh, when you were I, I got out in uh, April Fool's Day in 2004. And I, I says to myself, I says that in the book, I says, I says, uh, I feel bank robber. I says, uh, chicken, what was it? I says, I feel bank robber. I says, I've been recalled back to prison. I says, fuck it. I says, I'm going out. I says, and I, what was it? I says, I says, uh, I says, and I'm no fooling about. So I get into serious crime again, James. Don't mind. I says, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I get back into serious crime and I'm successful. And uh, and I was making a lot of money and I bought flats and all that and I had a flat in the West End. I spent about five grand a week and I says to everybody it was coming in, I says have a wine in the line and shut down, sit in your ass. <laughs> I says it's me and I used to walk up and down and talk. And all that. I used to tell people to be quiet. And I says, Sounds like my kind of party. Said, Aye, Aye, some people were like ah, but, uh, your music's right. And I says, Well come on out of the veranda and I'll we'll throw you down to fucking bohos. Mm. Yours might be fucking better. How much think you know you've spent mean? all the years? I must have spent 16. a couple of million. Yeah, a few million easier, isn't it? Yeah, easy. Because yeah, you know you've lived a high life, man. You've yeah, you've been in my head, haven't you? Well, that second time I came out when I get back into crime, I had a five year run. I was in uh, Thailand, St. Lucia, and all that. And uh, okay, I was buying fucking everything. You know when I mean? did you start doing the documentaries? How many documentaries have you done? Uh, I think I've done three, you know what I mean? And I've done it? one for the National Geographic mm -hmm. that went to 60 countries. And uh, I've done a Faces of the Underworlds with a guy Bernard Mahoney. Uh, done a YouTube, there's a YouTube one on STV News after uh, the bomb and the thing now, I get slashed and all that in the one week. What was the, what was the script to the Danny Dyer one? The Danny Dyer was the uh, thing me when I was staying in the penthouse up in the Huggin Field Lock. Uh, he was doing a programme called Danny Dyer's. Me, Britain's hardest. Deadliest men. Aye, deadliest men. So they'd phoned me up and all that and they agreed to date and that. 
And I was going to take them around all the pubs and clubs. I was barred from cause commotions at the doors mm. and all that and mm. different things. So we were into day two of film and there was a bomb put under the car. And uh, Danny died. It was all, all the thing who says were evacuated and all that. And they all fucked off. And he says that thing me, I told them to keep the cameras rolling. And I says, look, I says, there's going to be a war here. Know what I mean? And he says, no, he says, we can't get insurance. And they fucked off. I says, dirty shite bags. <laughs> but, uh, but, but when the bomb was under the car, that was, it, it was in a par. It was in a par, James, the, the old Bailey, the seriousness. There was a bomb under the car on the Friday. The Tuesday, I get slashed, watch, watching the dug. People jumped out of the motor and slashed us. Try to get my throat, never go right. I laughed at things. I walked along my my street laughing. I says, get out and get it back, you know what I mean? But it's just the way they done it, it's for the back. And uh, then on the Friday, it was a week later after the bomb, I was in my flat uh, with Star Keenan and that organised fucking terrorist unit mob come up, Star says, what is it? Not mob come up, I said, nothing. Come in, this is in, we talked to you, and I and took it into the room, started in the living room, we went, You've got to arrest you. As he says, arrest me. He says, I thought I was a victim. So he's down to Bird Street, fucking trying to give an interview and all that. I says, what is it? They went, eh, you, you caused a breach of the peace in Boho three weeks ago. That was people just trying to get me off the street. So that 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 was me fucking kept in. And the Sunday morning, eh, I'd, I'd left the blink reveal outside the fucking the, the house. When I get arrested and the Sunday morning, uh, three detectives came up and they weren't up to see thing me about my welfare or going to church. They says, Your motor got petrol bombed last night. I says, What? I says, My motor got petrol. I says, Where were you? So that was freaking the bombing on Friday, slashing Tuesday, me arresting Friday, then the fucking thing. Uh, <laughs> A uh, fat petrol bombs. And you wonder how Danny died. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's it, it, a good thing. But it's, you know, I mean, a, a young director could have made his name. I so the sister. So the sister. You better watch your house tonight, Earl. No, sorry, I'm quiet now, my gentleman. So, so the sister's in the the Sunday morning, and he says, "Ian, he says uh, we don't want a gangland war starting." And I says, "Listen, it's fucking already started." Mm -hmm. I went, "What?" I says, "It's fucking already started, and that's it." I says, I'm no backing down to this, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And uh, so if, after that, I lost the flats and all that, James, and I moved back into my ma's, and this is where the book thing would come into, because I was partying too much, and uh, I'd ended up in my ma's a couple of months, and I went, this is, I think I'll write a book, but I didn't know how the first way to go about writing a book, and I says, we'll just start when we were born, and I, and I was in a good way computers of that then, like A4 paper, and my ma used to go to her beds at uh, nine in the morning, and at nine in the morning, at nine at night after the soaps, and I would sit with this A4 paper and you know, stick me notes, and I wrote, and before you know it, my, my boy would come up and say I'd wrote 2,000 words, he'd put it into 3,000 words, and uh, before you know it, I had 180,000 words, and I was trying to get a deal, and I had to get David Leslie he used to work for the News of the World, but he says, I'll get you a deal with mainstream publishing. And uh, he went like, he says, for fuck's sake, he says, do you know what you've wrote here? I went, no. He says, he says a book, a standard book is 80,000, 100,000 words. He says, you've wrote 185,000 words. 185,000 words? I says, I know I want three books. I want <laughs> and he went, no, but it was economic recession mm -hmm. then. And he says, no, it, it couldn't happen. Because your story's you know I mean? mental. Your story's, for, uh, Elliot, I don't know what you're thinking, mate, it's, it's it's madness and you're trying to get another book out so for anybody watching you need to get this you need to get the other book sorted because it's frightening and right. even though see because you've lived it you probably don't feel it as much even though when you've got to courts and helicopters but it's that is heavy crime no, to a I bank know, sitting in a bank playing pool and well, you're trying about, 16 people up in it you're talking about a guy next door that's killed six people you know what I mean mm -hmm. you're talking about a brink smart robber Mickey mm -hmm. McEvoy, he was a nice the guy. The Richardsons, the Craze. He's in Spain now. The Craze, the Richardsons. You'd know the IRA, so can, you'd Italian gangsters. Uh, the wee guy for Corby, fucking chopped, can't see that for all that, and left in a plastic bag, and Colin Island, he'd killed five people. Do you, ever get, of people. Do you ever get nightmares? No, no, because no, I've been doing this since I was 15, 16. Come on, you and come accustomed to it. No, to just my custom, because when I was sitting in all their cells and that, that nine year down in England, 
I just thought I was what I enjoyed listening to stories, you know mm. what I mean? And uh, there was some guys like that, oh, I had 10 million and all that, and I was like, how do you know retiring, mate? Ah, it was easy and all that. It says, fucking, I had the fucking yacht and the 5,000 pound suit, the valor and all that. And he says, oh, I used to do is meet a phone call. And fucking, he's doing 25 years. And I says, well, it couldn't be that easy. He went, how's that? I says, you're fucking sitting here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. He says, uh -huh. you bastard, you. Uh -huh. He says, it's the next one. He says, he says, I was up all night uh -huh. thinking that you says uh -huh. it was right. I says, because you could have retired with 10 million. But that is the life of crime. People can't be like me a million, two million. This boy me. told me he was going to, he thought he was super, he was super white. He says, Ian, I was going to a phone box three miles away, four miles away. But he didn't realise he was getting fucking folied for 18 mm -hmm. months. And that was back in the 90s. That's what I'm saying. So you're, you could tell aye. the technology they've got you're now. You're never clever enough. No, I mean? it's only one mistake. The, the coppers are always two steps ahead, three steps no, no. ahead. And the funny thing is, they're only doing their job as well. Do you know what I mean? Aye, We're in that life of crime. You're grown up in Paul, so Black Hill, you're grown up to hate the police. Do you aye. know what I mean? But if it's your way involved in that, then... Like I say, it's crazy, man. Yeah, I, what's, the, what's the plans for your future then? What's the, what's the plans for hey, you? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just with a girlfriend. I'm just trying to be quiet. Quiet I mean? life. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and write another book. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Nobody will employ me as a job. You know what I mean? But then, you know, you no get a contact to that guy gave you a job and he's an engineer. <laughs> 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 just say that's me just out of jail. I've got my head sorted now. Nah, I know. But like I say, your story is, is unbelievable. And for you to come on here today and, and be as honest as you have, man. And that's only a wee bit. I forgot loads of I things. Know. Loads and loads. Long's that I mean? been? Nearly two hours. Nearly two hours. Yeah, another ten minutes. <laughs> just we'll, we'll beat Johnny Steel, man. Beat Johnny. Is that? Nearly three. Oh, what? just in. Two hours 49 minutes. No, it's oh, no. For fuck's sake. Oh, for fuck's sake. Can, sorry. can I get another couple of minutes in? <laughs> I want to talk to my sister now. Right, of course, I want to go. I, uh, no, I, I'd like to thank uh, my sister Nat, for coming down to visit. And uh, she, she, she's she been a rock. And also, thing we, my mum died 18 months ago, James. Sorry and to the hear police, that. No, okay, she was 78, she had a good life. And uh, I, I was a bit angry, well, more than angry. The police followed to the, the church. To Daldowie, then to the Princess Bar, and the woman in the Princess Bar, Adrian, says, eh, the police were into me all week, we didn't have an that woman's funeral. And says, eh, the, the woman used to come in here, but she's she's all now, she used to, just comes out at Mother's Day now, and he says, do you know who the boy is? And she went, aye, the boy's fucking, she's only been in a couple of stupid wee thing, eh, bits of crime new here and there, no, no major. So they, they they think we'd mark my mum's funeral and that there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, so the police are now, they're, they're, I, I don't think the police like me still, you know what I mean? But they think I still, they still think I'm involved in crime, but, but they're not. never going to like you unless you, know what you I mean? unless, like I say, it's actions speak louder than words as well. They're going to think of you, they're going to perceive you as that character, the bank robbery, the jewellers, the post offices, all the people you know. Mm -hmm. And that is your high profile. Yeah. For you to completely change that, if I'm honest, man, it's going to be tough for anybody mm -hmm. to see, especially the police, but you, like I say, you get good people, you get bad people. Yeah. And you're trying to change your yeah. life and you're trying to do things right. You're trying to get your other book out, like I say. And you're, who's the, uh, the secondary school? Aye, that's it. Aye, can, can, can I tell you this, James? Aye, you're thing with Aye. They want a shout out aye, for you. Aye, aye, aye. My, my young niece, I was on the phone last night to my sister, my niece Jade, 16. Mm -hmm. Aye. She goes to All Saints mm -hmm. uh, se Secondary with her pals and mm -hmm. says they were watching your homeless the thing. Homeless documentary. And uh, thing with, I think they've all got a wee thing for you, a wee star and that. And, uh, oh, but, but yeah, you you go. and she says she would use a mention of course I will Jade and so we say Jade hello. all the students that uh, uh, I was there uh, All Saints All Saints Secondary I was there last week ah, doing a talk is that, is that what it ah, was I met three young boys ah, I was doing a talk they, they, well, they were on press ah, with that James because they'd watched my homeless documentary and three of the boys have went and raised like, nearly a grand to go to help the homeless it's ah, unbelievable so Jade or everybody at All Saints Secondary how he's doing and listen ah, Elliot nice. Reeves man the big man is whose letters use his his space today, uh, check out Inspired Edinburgh, the stuff's unbelievable, 71 podcasts on it, the big guy's class, class act, you're genuinely big man, you're a, Aye, you're thank you as well, he's a been a gentleman today, he's welcomed and, me uh, in the other day as well, he's welcomed I mean? as we well opened arms, and check out his stuff on yeah. YouTube, his stuff has classes, double my podcast, and like I say, the big man's got some set up, but Ian, 
I thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't know how I'm going to shake your horn, but uh, <laughs> I can't believe that's how long yeah, it's yeah, took. Thanks, Shane. Thanks for having me. It's an absolute belt of your stories. Uh, I mean, it's crazy, but anyway. like I say, people kind of love that stuff. And yeah. Listen, a pleasure. And all the best for the future, you and the missus. And appreciate it. Same thank yourself. you. Oh, you're a Cheers. success. No, thank I mean, you. Appreciate you're it. Thank you. Job, Cheers. Thanks, James. No worries, bro. And I just want to say a big thank you to our new sponsor, Collins Morgan. Collins Morgan have assisted thousands of Scottish residents with financial difficulty. So if you are struggling to keep up with the increase of cost living, along with debt management, then message Collins Morgan on Facebook and they will give you free, friendly and regulated advice on the solutions that are available to you. Thank you.